Hey everybody, welcome back. It's 3D6 down the line. We're doing our continuing series of the Halls of Ardenvool Mega Dungeon by Richard Barton using the Old School Essentials system by Gavin Norman. Uh, we, at some point today, got over 2,000 subscribers, which is awesome. But the last time I checked, we actually lost a subscriber. So <laughs> as we're recording... <laughs> oh, no, I know. Yeah, what have we done? What I know. have we done? So to whoever that person was that decided it wasn't worth their while, screw you, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I am your referee. My name is John, and going around the horn we have tonight. I'm Mike. I play Gorind Blackhood, the apprentice barrel maker that has now become an adventurer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm David. I play Varger the Thief. I'm Matt. I play uh, Avaricio the Cleric. And normally we would have some sort of ritty, witty repartee with one Ted, who'd be playing Squeegee the Goblin, but Ted is dead to us and has a previous engagement, so uh, not tonight. Did, did, didn't he say he might be on later? That's true. It would be a nice surprise if he did, uh, but we'll see, because that will wreak havoc with my cameras once again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's like a, 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 a viewer intermission if that happens. Yes, yeah. yes. So we might have to bow out real quick while we take care of that little technical difficulty. <laughs> Technical difficulty, otherwise known as Ted. Um, okay, so last time we met our crew, the AV Club, um, it was the 29th of Lucrios, Demas Day, um, and it was pouring rain. It's about 9.30 a.m., so we're about two days into the campaign right now, and we have a major change-up in weather. So uh, luckily for the troops here, they have uh, ventured southward along the Swift River back into the city and have decided to... Uh, explore the ruins of the um, ancient uh, palace of the Imperial Archons. Um, the the Imperial Archon was a position in Old Archontos that was equivalent to like a governor uh, of a city or a large realm. So this is where the um, the, the 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 community ruler uh, basically dwelt at one point. Uh, so escaping out of the rain, they had uh, a uh, well, attempting to escape out of the rain, they had approached these large eb freestanding ebony doors that basically were the main entrance to the palace at one time. However, the uh, western and central parts of the palace had actually collapsed into ruin. At one point, uh, back when it was in its full glory, there were th the three sections of the palace, central, western, and eastern, were both were all capped by three domes. Um, the the western and eastern were a little bit smaller than the central, the Grand Central Dome, but now the western and central have collapsed, and so only the eastern portion remains uh, somewhat intact. So, scrabbling over the rubble um, and just avoiding the doors entirely, you had gone into the eastern, um, into the uh, into the um, antechamber, which had a surprisingly sort of like domestic scene on it with like some settees and um, uh, uh, other furniture, but there were three doors leading out of the out of the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Antichamber. Knowing that the north and western ones were blocked by rubble. The eastern one, however, was wizard locked. Um, and you, I can't remember who it was exactly. Was it Ted Squeegee who found the... Ted had, had, the, had the thing. Yeah, found that on one of the, the, the skeletal remains what appeared to be servants that were actually lying in some of the settees. Am I saying that right? Is it Seti? Setes? Seti. Seti. Um, Seti. Yeah. And it opened. I, I only know that because of the Arctic Monkey song. Ah. Ah. So, yeah. And it, uh, that caused the wizard lock. You heard the tumblers cagoon, 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 and open up to the um, on the door that led to the eastern, more intact part of the palace. And so, with the rain pounding outside, uh, you were just about to open that door, is where we left off. Let's open the door. Okay. Yeah. Do it. Right. To the module. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Squeegee does it, so if he dies. <laughs> right. Right, Sorry, right. Sorry, Ted. Thanks for joining in. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, dead. Also, I, I don't know that this needs to happen now, but if we ever feel the need to stow some gear because we're over encumbered, uh, I would do that when, when and if y'all want to, and some ruins or something like that if you have anything. Cool. Uh, right. Okay. So the Eastern wing of the palace, uh, so, uh, unlocking the door, which probably hasn't been opened for some time, uh, 
it opens up into a long, wide corridor, um, and uh, that is, of course, extremely dark, um, as the this eastern portion is intact, as I said, so that there isn't uh, too much sunlight, what, what little sunlight there is in this day of pouring rain, um, to illuminate anything. So uh, what little uh, sunlight is passing in through the, the kind of ruined antechamber that you're in is basically the only thing that's illuminating in front of you. Um, so you see that there are, there are a number of, number of rooms that sort of uh, uh, go off on either side of the of the corridor, um, but uh, just a dust in front of you, basically. How do you want? You you can't really move forward without seeing, unless you want to. Uh, I can go ahead and light my uh, bullseye lantern. Can I can I ask a question real quick? Are one, is one of us going to take uh, um, mapping duties? Uh, so, oh, for, Ted usually does that, doesn't he? Yes. For, for this one, you you don't necessarily have to do that. Okay. Yeah. Six. Uh, let's see. Bullseye lantern. One, two, three, four. Yeah, bullseye lantern. Okay. Lantern. I have a single flask of oil. So. Okay. I have, I have some backups. Do not worry. I have I have plenty of oil. Love um, it. Okay. When we uh, when he first sparks that lantern and look inside, like one of the first things I'm going to be looking for are um, sconces or any light sources that we could spark up so that we don't have to use our resources uh, uh unfortunately not there are a number of sconces um but there is no you know no viable source yeah. uh you said this chamber is covered in dust john uh the first thing i'm going to look at while avaricious is doing that is to see if there are any footprints or things that have disturbed said dust before uh, us there is not so it seems as though it's been sealed for some time it does yeah all right um I am going to, uh, I mean, I'll skip a rock on the floor, as I always like to do, I suppose. Just sure, like, yeah. Uh, I'm, just I'm a, a big pebble thrower. Just, just an encumbrance thing. Did you mark off a flask of oil? Yes. Okay, and the rest of you, what do you guys have in your hands, just so we know? Uh, axe and, or sword, sword and shield. Okay. I will carry my mace and my shield. Okay. I will carry my blackjack. No, I don't think there's anyone to knock unconscious near. Okay, I'll, I'll carry my hand <laughs> axe and the lantern. Hand axe and the lantern. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So you uh, you skip that stone down there. It it poofs out into the dust a little bit, um, uh, and uh, it just you know silence basically dead silence. Do I hear? Uh, not to belabor it too much. Do I hear like a? echo of any sort that indicates this chamber is really long or does it feel kind of shallow um, that's discernible assuming i don't see like the end of the channel with my light source or a, a, a chamber rather yeah, i don't remember how how far does the light from a bullseye lantern go it goes 30. Far. it goes 30 the same as a torch um it just lasts it lasts a lot longer um okay so do we do we see the back of the room with the no you don't see the back of the room um well, let's. How, how should I put this? You. You see a dragon at the back of the room, but no. he's blocking the wall behind him. No, uh, <laughs> you do see the slight suggestion way off in the distance, but you can't really tell um, of some sort of light uh, around, like I, I don't know, like way off in the distance, basically. Mm. Okay. 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 Uh, it's, it's very, very faint, though. It's almost like you. It's like you think it's a trick of your eyes getting used to the darkness. Sure. Do you guys want me in. to scout a few feet ahead, or how would you like to do this? I oh, sure. Yeah, go, go ahead. Let's let's go in. I'm, it's it's. Is it raining? Are we under full cover now, John? Yeah, it, the, the, the eastern stuff? portion has is completely roofed, and the in the dome itself, yes. as you saw when you were approaching it, is actually intact. That's the only way that you were actually able to. Yeah, Mike. Is there an overwhelming sense of cold? No, <laughs> and. <laughs> Is there a horrible stench of decay? No, I would tell you that. Yeah, it's all, all seems normal. Uh -huh. Awesome. Okay, so what I think I would like to do... Mm -hmm. uh, there's a... So that I understand the mechanics of a bullseye lantern. Oddly enough, I've never bought a bullseye lantern. It's not, really, it's not really a thing in OSC. There's no real difference. So we would just play it circumstantially if you wanted like the bullseye aspect of a lantern uh, to be something that is effective mechanically. I'm just like trying to. Wonder, I can like shut. Or... I can shut it and open it. Right? Yes, you can. That's yeah. The, basic the, the mechanic okay. on it is that it only shines in one direction. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's like a flashlight. It's got yeah. mirrors on the other side on the inside of the lantern, so it reflects all the light out. Right. 
But Am I'm I not... mansplaining to you, David? What's the... oh, man... oh, listen. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I... How dare you? I'm not going to. You know, it's a lantern; it sheds light. It's fine. All, all I want to make sure is if I if I want to shutter it really quickly, I, that is something I'm like mechanically capable of doing. Yep. To make it dark again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, why don't we just I'm, go I'm ahead and go old. in? <laughs> why don't we just go ahead and go in? I'll take like a ten foot lead on you guys in case someone gets squashed by a trap. <laughs> yeah. Sound good. Okay. I appreciate that. All and right. Like so walking you... carefully, but not you know like. I got you. Yep. All right. So you basically, um, as you carefully kind of dungeon crawl your way forward um, and shining the light forward, you can see that there uh, that you're you go past like a number of different like storerooms, which you assume to be storerooms. Um, there's obviously like nothing of value in there. Um, and there's you pass at one point a stairwell that probably uh, at one point went up to the upper floors, but there's mm. but it's completely choked with rubble. Um, sure. And uh, at one point you actually the, the first time you come past a room that actually sparks your interest is you see that you come upon a uh, to the you're basically heading generally easterly into the into the wing itself to your south you actually see that there is um, what appears to be a sitting room um, uh, of some sort and what draws your interest is you see that it is draped with like crumbling silk and some linen finery um, and some tapestries on the wall as well. Okay. Um, and the door is open. It is open. Yeah, you're kind of passing by and shining your lantern into all these rooms, and like you're you're basically saying like, ah, oh, that's just like you know a storeroom with nothing in it. And then you see sure. this one, you're like, whoa, okay, what's what's in there? You know that sort of thing. So we're really doing like a Ghost Hunters episode right here. I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, um, uh, quick question, just like while we've been in this hallway, is there a low ceiling above us? You mentioned that there's a dome. Do we not see the dome, or are we? Is you, there like a you do not. No, it's actually only like ten feet above you, so it's like a normal floor height. Mm-hmm. But you did pass a okay. stairwell that obviously led upwards, but is completely choked with rubble, like totally unpassable, impassable. Okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to saddle up to the side of this door. Sorry, did I cut you off? I was just going to ask, I want to go in that room with the cool stuff. Yeah, let's saddle up to the side of the door and kind of peek in. I'll mm-hmm. do a, do like a light sure. survey real quick in there to make sure uh, there's nothing moving. I'm or, just going to say a, a turn went by to get to that point. And um, as you, as you're in the doorway, Farger, and you, and you shine the light in, uh, you can see that most of the of the cloth work here, like the linens and the tapestry stuff, that most of them are rotted through. There is one, however, that is made of uh, sort of abstract Arcantian art. Most Arcantian art is actually like representative, but this mm-hmm. one is much more like um, you you could peg it as Arcantian, but it's a particular style of like a certain century of the empire, which was more reminiscent of um, of like. Uh, early Muslim art, you know, like where it's very, nice. you know, okay. geometric and abstract and stuff like sure. that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks like um, it's maybe relatively heavy, but it looks like it might be worth a pretty penny. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay. Uh, okay. In, but okay. What, so you, you see that first, this kind of beautiful preserved tapestry. However, uh, what draws your eye immediately in the and Goran and Aphorisios, Goran looking underneath Varga's arms, Aphorisios looking <laughs> un- over, <laughs> <There you go. laughs> is something on the ground which probably sparks a memory of something that you've heard about. It is a uh, a six foot diameter ring of what appears to be two inch tall paving stones. Ah. And on the far side of it is an eight inch tall, so like rising up above that that ring of stones, uh, a rectangle about forty eight inches long, about four four feet long. Like sitting outside that ring, right? Gotcha. And it's rising out of the ground. Um, there doesn't seem, uh, other than like a few scattered chairs and settees and chaises, um, there does not appear to be anything else, you know, remarkable in the room. But this is definitely something that's very strange. And it's like stones, like, you know, it's de- demarcated out. You know what I mean? Uh, John, can I go get dwarfy on the construction? Sure. I'm going to try my um, detect construction tricks to see if it is like a doorway or if there's like a hollow space underneath it or if there's like an opening or. Well, do you, add it? you might just um just so you're clear, Mike, it's so there's just like a set of stones that are only two inches off the ground. Mm-hmm. Right. And they're sort of like brick, like stone bricks, but but made out of stone. Right. Um, and they right. just they and they're just joined to form like a circle on the ground. 
I get that. And yeah. I'm wondering if that is some sort of portal or something in the middle of oh, that circle. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. That's yeah. what I'm going to be checking. Or if there's like a hollow plinth underneath it or okay. there's something unusual that I want to find out why they did this on the floor. Got Does it. that make sense? It, sounds, yeah. it sounds very familiar to, to what the, the gentleman Fenitor told us about, maybe. He said that there were these rings, right? The teleport circles, right? Yeah. Uh, the fast travel things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, all right. Uh, it's, I have a two and six chance, John. Okay. It'll take a turn to like get all dwarfy. I rolled a six. So. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you obviously recall what Finetti, Finetti were told you, but um, um, nothing about this uh, speaks of any sort of strange stonework. Mm -hmm. Just that. If thing. only we had a mage, boys. <laughs> if only we had a mage. Indeed. <laughs> Um, I'm going to follow him into the room as well, and while he's looking at that, I'd like to get a closer gander at the tapestry, and I'd like to very delicately, perhaps with the edge of my axe, look behind it, kind of pry it a bit. Let's see if yeah. so there's anything back there, et cetera, et cetera. Doesn't appear to be anything back there. Um, it is made out of linen. It's a bit surprising that it actually survived um, the ravages of time, but uh, um, you, are, you, are pleasant, you are pleasantly surprised to see that it is made out of linen rather than like well, I don't I don't know what what tapestries were normally made out of wool I don't know well and probably I mean I yeah, guess it depends, depends on what yeah. yeah so it's very it's 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 actually it is large size so it would be kind of encumbering but it, it's as light as these things would possibly be you know what I mean, you, know what I mean? Sure. Um, you you know David that if you wanted to pull it down um, and stow it you could certainly do so um, but it would take up two encumbrance slots we could just go, just fold it up neatly, or roll it up actually, and just leave it by the doorway on the way out. I we can we grab it on the way out. We should roll it. Um, I'll let David climb up on my shoulders so that he can reach the top of the tapestry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm about a foot taller than I was before. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> Zing. Zing. Uh, John, so while uh, he's getting dwarfy on the stones and he's checking out the tapestry, I'd like to use that that same time. Mm -hmm. um, to uh, 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 check the uh, rest of the room. Is there uh, another exit or like a, a secret door hidden somewhere sure. around? Yeah, so there's nothing that, uh, just a casual glance doesn't doesn't tell you anything, but if you spend a turn, you can you can make a roll. If you, if you just yeah, want to do a general spend, search. Once yeah, again, if we're spending like, that turn anyway, I just thought we can... Uh, yeah, and uh, for the listeners out there and, and for you guys as players as well, don't forget too that the way I basically rule it is, is that if you just say like I want to do a general search for like a turn in like a 10 foot by 10 foot area, you can do that with just a enroll. But if you tell me exactly where you're looking and what you're experimenting with, you, if there is something to be found, I will just tell you you do not need to roll. That means, you know what I mean? Got it. Yeah. Uh, so Matt, it sounds like you're going to be doing a general search, so go ahead and just roll me a check. Okay, I will do this. I will roll a d6. Uh, that is a five, John. A five? So you don't find anything of interest. Um, uh, as you're kind of... Um, well, I would say that Gorn would probably be the first to notice this. Um, uh, Gorn, as you're making a, a very detailed survey of the ring, um, you do come across what appears... To, it, it, that, that, you know, that high um, section of the stone, right? So uh, basically, on the far side is a 48-inch long, four-foot long, uh, uh, solid piece of stone that is eight inches tall, so it rises clearly above the rest of, of the stone circle. And that piece of stone, that rectangle, is div subdivided into equal sections of six inches each. Okay, and there's like insets in each oh, of those. Okay, insets. Mm -hmm. Got it. As if you were to set like a key or some other like magical stone to activate it or something. Yes, like that, correct. Right? Like if it was, if the key was shaped like a perfect square, that's what it, um, yeah, there's, there there's six perfect squares that just go from left to right, dun, 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 all uh, insets. And they don't go like all the way down the eight inches. It's sort of like, there's just, it's like this sort of like raised up little control panel basically, right? With like these and six insets. You said there's no footprints, <laughs> right? There's no footprints in the room, in the dust other than our own. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So no one else knows about this, guys. No one else has access to this waypoint. Let's just call yeah. them waypoints. My suspicion, because uh, Farker is very intelligent, <laughs> is that each of those insets is a feature of a coordinate. I don't know why, but that's the first thing, thing I think. And that the arrangement... I think you need a keystone. I think you put I, a yeah, keystone. Yeah, probably, right? Yeah. Uh, but if, it, but if it's a universal probably. thing in which these are 
if the rumor we heard before was true, like usable in multiple locations, I imagine the rank it doesn't matter. In any case, very interesting. Uh, I have one other question about the tapestry before we take it down, John, mm -hmm. which is well, two. One, is there any dust on the tapestry? Yeah, yes, it's dusty. Okay, so it is dirty. So mm -hmm. it's not like some weird preternatural cleanliness to it. Yeah, the only thing and really. Two, yeah, go ahead. No, go, go, go. No, 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 I'm done. There's two, like, though it is abstract, do I, can I, like, discern any sort of pattern or sense of, is it, you mentioned, like, a mosaic on it, like, is there, like, a language aspect to it? Is it, like, cubist? Does it just feel completely abstract to me? Is there anything that I can sort of derive from it informationally? Does that make sense? Not really, no. Uh, there's no, okay. it doesn't, no. It, it, it's, right. like, purely, like, an abstract pattern. The, the cool. thing that struck you is that it, you can basically peg it as, like, oh, yeah, I remember seeing art about this period. You know what I mean? Sure. Avaricios probably would have, of the three of you, would have the most knowledge of, like, he could probably peg, like, the exact century. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, yeah, like, it's not like an air vest with, with, like, no. lettering or No, there's no, no lettering, <laughs> no. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. There's no need to get fancy and show off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so I think uh, I'm going to roll that up. Uh, is there anything you guys want to do with the stones like that before proceeding? Or um, I mean, we uh, should do a really thorough search of the room to see... What shape are the insets on top of that plinth, John? They're square. You said they were square, right? Yeah, they're to square. see if there are any of those loose tiles around. I was we should look around and see if we point. see anything that looks like a like a thing. Let's look for a secret compartment in the plinth that might have like a like a storage area for those. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So um, looking carefully and prying around the actual. Remember, this is only like an eight inch plinth. It's like this, right? Right. But compared to like the two inches of the thing, it's taller and above. But yeah, so you can easily give that a real thorough search and. Um, it appears to be a solid block of stone, um, extra, expertly carved on top. There's not appeared to be any mm -hmm. sort of secret, um, you know, compartment or anything like that. And you don't there see nowhere, nowhere in the room where those could be stored, little cabinet or little thing. No, uh, you can, you can. I, I, I understand. Like you guys are, I understand what you guys are looking for specifically. It'll spend a turn um, simultaneously, uh, uh, but you do not find any square pieces of tile or, or okay. glass or anything like that unfortunately cool, 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 cool. Okay. uh last thing i'd like to do is just you said there are other rotten tapestries but i want to do the same thing kind of look behind them sure yep there does not appear to be anything there all right cool you're fairly confident satisfied that, for now yeah if the, the the interesting thing in the room was this uh ring yeah, let's uh let's roll the big tapestry up set it by the door so we could uh grab it on our way out okay cool yep Done yeah. I'll also just for the sake of it, I'll stand on the diving board, which is what I choose to call the plinth, and I'll jump in the middle of the circle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing happened. Anything happened? <laughs> nothing. Nothing in the middle. No. All right. Cool. Uh, and I disappeared forever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's happened before in a different game. I it that. has happened before. <laughs> it has. But, but that circle was glowing. So that. Yes. that was <laughs> uh, okay. So you go back out, and uh, I assume you're going to continue down the corridor. Yes. So eventually, um, it uh, it empties out into what you are certain. Once you step out into it, uh, you are directly underneath the Eastern Dome, and mm -hmm. this chamber is actually quite wondrous. As you realize that you do not need to have your lantern lit because yeah. somehow there is actually sunlight coming through and illuminating this uh, huge chamber that you're in. So um, I'm going to. You're you're not gonna you, you douse the lantern once you have enough light to see, correct? Yeah. Is yeah. is there an Oculus in the center, like uh, the famous with the Pantheon? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you no. Know, <the> famous. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, no. but 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 interestingly, and I'll sh I'll tell you what you see in just a second. I just got to recalculate yeah, sure. the lantern. So we did three turns of the lantern. So I need you to mark down on your lantern and remind me when you light it back up again that you now have a okay. twenty-one turn lantern. Okay, twenty-one turn lantern. Okay. Um. Okay. So. When you come into this room, the first thing that hits you is the dampness and humidity uh, of the chamber. Now, the, the whole day has been sort of like that, but once you kind of got out of the rain and we're kind of traveling through here, it was dry and dusty, right? But here, everything is very, very humid and damp. Sunlight, uh, the dull gray sunlight that's uh, from the day, from the rain above, um, is actually pouring through an intact dome with no visible... Uh, portals or windows to the outside it's almost like the dome itself is like a semi like you can see the worked stone of it expertly carved very much like the pantheon um but um 
uh, but it's almost like it's like a uh, transitionary barrier, right? Like it's like it's mm-hmm. like a, a semi semi transparent, allowing the sun to actually come through. Um, as if it's just cool. to be clear, sorry, go go go. As, as if it was um, uh, open to the sky, right? As if there was nothing there, like an illusion. But you can actually see the the, the stonework as well. It, it goes all the way up, uh, so it's uh, the. From the outside, you can tell that this the intact eastern portion of which you're in right now is about approximately four stories high. So this chamber takes up the entire four stories. So like unlike what Avaricios noticed that you were in a ten foot long, ten foot high quarter, now it's like you know shoots up into the sky. This massive dome ahead of you, uh, uh, up above you, and um, the dome itself is about thirty five feet in diameter. So it's really big, um, and it's quite beautiful. You see up in the upper reaches of this chamber, there are a number of um, balconies and short bridges that actually connect the balconies to each other, but never across the center of the dome, right? So they kind of go on tangents, if you're picturing like a circular sure. area, right? Like, um, you know what I mean? Like the, like, like the short little lines that kind of connect these balconies, but never one that actually crosses directly underneath the 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 whole span the whole 35 foot span of the dome and on these balconies you see they are dripping with all manner of um flora of flowers and vines and trailing plants uh, sort of draped over um and in the center right directly in front of you directly underneath the dome 40 feet below uh there is a 15 foot diameter basin that actually has water in it. And there is a fountain in the center. Um, now, uh, as you guys kind of step into this, you actually jump back in alarm as you actually see the fountain actually spray all of a sudden a huge gush of water directly up. That uh, t- It's sort of like a sprinkler. So it like it, it heads up and then like spreads out into a mist and like douses uh-huh. the, fl- the flora up on the balconies above. Awesome! It's like the it's like the supermarket when they spray your broccoli uh, trying to pick it out. Yeah, but from the ground up instead of from the top down. Yeah, yeah back, we found the hydroponics used, farm. Yeah, yeah. the the back floor there used to be malls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. the 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 floor um uh is slick with spray. Um, your boots actually make like a little weak weak. You know, as you kind of step into it, um, and like the dust that you collected from the quarter uh, beyond is like now mud on the bottom of your boots. Mm. Um, but there is a um. Yeah, yeah. So like vines, orchids, small shrubs. There's hey even... guys, Ted. Ted's available. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, Ted's here. Uh, yeah, he's texting. Okay, folks out there, just give us one quick second while we get Ted all hooked up, and it'll be a momentary blip for you as we uh, return with Ted. Give us one moment. Okay, we're back. I have brought with me out of the rain a bedraggled goblin named Squeegee. Welcome, welcome, Ted. What are you gonna do, huh? You know, uh, <laughs> you, you, Mama Lucas left me behind. What can I? Have? I'm sorry. Wait, are you New York or are you Italian? I don't understand what's happening. Wait, right now. Oh, <laughs> my, hey, <laughs> so many, uh, who do you think you are? <laughs> Making this up as I go along. Come on, uh, forget about it. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh. just to, yeah. So, just to clarify, these are um, there are bridges that connect the balconies. But none of the any of those individual bridges actually span across the thirty five wide thirty foot wide um, strange magical roof uh, the dome there right and dripping off those balconies all manner of vegetation ground here is slick there is a fifteen foot diameter basin directly in front of you. I have a couple questions, John. Yes. Uh, I'll fire them off quick. The sky above that we see, mm-hmm. as far as I can tell. And I'll clarify if you need to. Is this the sky we saw outside, or is this a different sky? Good question. It is the same sky. Yeah. It's the same sky. Yeah. Like I said, the light is very diffuse and gray. You know, it matches like the you know the color of the sky that was outside. Sure. The balconies, there's no like MC Escher shit going on, right? They're still like oriented. They they go around, but there's no like weird abstract sort of like extra dimensional paths that are being No. Does that make sense? But then, it like goes up, or yeah, okay. Cool. Th- that's the balcony. The bridges are very strange. I, I meant the I meant the bridges. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So the bridges they, they 
they're just strange because of like the how they don't they don't follow like the symmetrical lines of the actual chamber itself, right? They're all at these tangents, right? Um, I think I'm using the word correctly, right? For in no, you are. Right? I, I think oh, my question is: that... Do any of them orient in a way that a human wouldn't be able to walk? No, on the bridge? no, 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 no. They all look perfectly okay. horizontal. So you're, you're saying rather than going directly across, they go like this and this? No, no, not like that. They it's if the if the dome is like a circle, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll picture, I'll picture it like um a, a top down. Okay, so the dome is like a circle. If you look at my fingers, right? Yeah, yeah, it was like a circle. Yep. And then there's these balconies all the way around. And then uh from one balcony it goes to another balcony, right? And then there's another bridge that kind of goes like that. But none of them actually go like from here to here or from here. That's to here. that's what I was trying to. Yeah. So they. That's what I was doing. Same thing. Yeah, okay, okay, I'm with you. Yeah. They make they make make a polygon around the outside. Yeah, but not perfectly symmetrical, right? There's okay. like some of them, have, you know, with you. Yeah, not every bridge, not every balcony connects with a, a bridge. You know, not every balcony is connected by a bridge. Sure. Yeah. Okay, two more questions okay. and then I'll, then I'll shut up. Mm -hmm. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> or so he says. <laughs> yeah. Next yeah, question. Let me, let me write this down. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can hold me to it. Uh, do any of these balconies or bridges contain flora that is spanning the distance to the floor? Are there any vines that look... Like they're coming all the way down to our level. Uh, no. Um, okay. And I should clarify too. This is because this is important. It's related to that. There isn't just the single line of balconies that are around the base of the dome. They basically line th th these balconies line like the entire vertical uh, sides of this chamber, and the chamber is forty feet high. There's multiple levels with multiple balconies ah. with multiple bridges. That makes sense. With, oh, so some okay. of the bridges are like this, and some wow. are like this. Yeah. So right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and so related to what you were asking, uh, David, like there, the uh, there are vines that drape down to balconies that then have vines that drape down to balconies. Yeah. That, that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Is anything touching our level though? As it or or yeah. or mm -hmm. okay. on the low the lowest set of balconies, there are some some hanging creepers. Cool. Mm -hmm. Last okay. question. Maybe the first thing I, I wondered when we entered into this chamber. Mm -hmm. When I looked down at my feet, either prior to, step, prior to stepping into the water or right after, I see ripples emanating from my feet. Do I see any current or other sources of ripples emanating in this room that are not us? Is the water totally, in other words, undisturbed prior to our disturbing it? You have a disturbed water. I've said the, the floor is slick. From moisture. Okay, so it's not like a it's not like a, a it's not inches, water. inches it's not, thick. It's just like right. okay, yeah, right. yeah, okay, cool, cool, right. cool. Mm -hmm. Which right. I would guess if there's water coming down, it's probably disturbing that anyway, though, right? Yeah, it's basically yeah. a little. It, it's super damp and humid, and like and and as you guys are sort of looking around and kind of taking right. in, another uh, jet of water goes off in a different direction, like the opposite, and and sprays that side of the chamber. And then as you see it kind of follow, um, you know, you can see that the mist and the wetness is what's causing the floor to be slick. Cool. Okay, I, I, these, oh, these jets. Sorry, go ahead, Matt. I was going to ask just a, a couple of questions. So um, this seems to be going off. I mean, it's gone off twice now, just since we've been here. Mm -hmm. We didn't hear anything when we were coming down the hall. Like none of this. We didn't hear it like splashing or shooting off. To be fair, you probably would have. Place. You probably would have heard. Okay. It's It's not like a. It's not like super loud, you know what I mean? Like if you if you kind of ma imagine those spritzes at the supermarket, right? It's like that, you know. Okay. But it is with enough I force that it probably there's enough force because it has to go all the way up to the to the dome that it probably would be uh, curable uh, from back in the quarter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just kind of making sure that it wasn't us that kind of like triggered it by showing up. No. It, right. it seems like it was going off before. Good question. No. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the second one, kind of tangent to what David was asking. Are there just any stairs up, like, or to the lowest level of these balconies? Is there just like an easy like stair up? No stairs, there, which is kind of interesting. Anything? Yeah. Interesting. Right. Are there any other exits from this room? Uh, that's a good question too. There is on the north wall. Um, there is a pair of double doors, and those double doors are ebony. Ooh. All right. All right. Cool. My question is. Do these jets of water appear to be like aimed at these gardens, or yes. does it look totally random? No, it looks like they're being aimed. It's specifically been built in order to water these so, plants. Right. So it's not a wonky fountain. It's a watering system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's their hydroponics farm. Yeah. Nice. 
Okay. Um, do, do the things like the flowers and stuff we recognize? They look like recognizable. We're like, oh yeah, that's a daisy and that's a lily. And uh, well, let me let me let me jump on that because I, my background is that I'm a farmer. Or at least I, I was. Uh, you know? So ah. I would know some. I would know some of these plants, and if they if they are weird or if they are normal, right? Yes. Yeah, so, are they poisonous? Th- so is they're it corn. <laughs> so some some of this stuff is normal. Um, as I said, like orchids and things like that, but um, and uh, trailing vines. All oh, weed. Um, there are some thorny plants uh, as well, some thorny vines, um, but a lot of it is exotic, uh, things that you have not seen before. Um, Avaricios, mm. you do see that there is a number of like um, of um, of uh, like grapevines, you know, which you're very obviously familiar with uh, from mm-hmm. where you're where, where you're from, um, but they don't look like they've been cultivated in any other manner than just to have been planted on these balconies and these planters, right? There's no, there's no concerted effort to grow, you know, for winemaking. Obviously it's just like, here, you know, these look good. Um, that's uh, yeah. Does this look like a decorative garden more so than a, like a food producing thing? Uh, it looks, yes, it looks decorative. If anything, it looks decorative. It looks decorative gone to riot. Okay. Yeah. Right. Nice. Right. All right. Cool. Um, it's a rad, this is a rad location. Dig. Um, there is, um, and you said it's a uh, forty feet across this room. You said, or uh, it's Two. there's not exact dimensions, but the 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 dome which dominates the entire thing is the thirty five foot diameter dome. So it's probably like a little feet. bit larger than that. All told. Okay. Um, hey guys, sorry, my dog is outside. Um, yep. I'll be right back. Sure. Cool. Okay. Okay. Can we just start kind of poking around? You know, walk around the outer rim of the room and sort of investigate. You know, is there like watering cans or uh like tools or like just right. see what i find you know kind of poke around sure uh give me one sec like a goblin would do mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, well, well he does that i want to walk towards the, the fountain in the center i'm curious about it i'll go i'll go with you okay so um squeegee yep. as, as you kind of go at the perimeter while um avaricious and goran goes towards the center um you're looking around, poking around, trying to see if there's any tent. There is nothing there. Um, however, you do notice something of interest um, uh, as you're kind of gazing upwards. You can see, like, near one of the higher balconies, like, closer to the dome than to the floor. Um, there is a very strange and exotic-looking plant um, that is... Uh, uh, let me get it here real quick. Get the exact description here. Um the plant itself has and it's it's basically perched right near the edge of the balcony has a pitcher shape like the body of it is sort of like looks like my puppy a... hello everyone oh hello wind oh what a cool Aww. yeah hey pooch um, all right has a, like a like a yeah like a pitcher. one of those like like that holds water kind of plants right but Yes, yeah, but itself it is it is a plant, right? Um, and it's quite large. What drew your eye is the fact that it's right. about um, it's about three feet tall and three feet wide, so it's quite bulbous, Oof. right? Um, and there are these um, a series of long, uh, thick tendrils that sort of um are kind of come up and then drape out over the side, and they are like draping way down over the balcony. And what what also drew your eyes is that these tendrils are actually um uh much longer than some of the other vines that are in the other balconies these are actually draping down like about 15 feet down so easily past like another balcony i wish to avoid these vines <laughs> <laughs> i and this, this uh, is around so, the edge where he is right no. yeah i think that picture looks probably about the right size to hold a goblin <laughs> and i do not want to be that goblin <laughs> So I will give that area a wide berth and warn the others that there's a weird looking plant and some fishy looking tendrils and I don't like the look of it. However, I do wonder if there might be something good inside the pitcher pot. <clears throat> it's on the basically on the western side of the chamber. Okay. And, um, um, how about, how about, high up is it's about two thirds of the way up. So yeah. do you think we got enough rope to get up there? We can just send our thief up to go up there, well, pick the plant. Up. Hold on, guys. Before we go, like, <laughs> willy-nilly all over the walls, there is a doorway to the north. It's I, very likely that we will find stairs that go up to these passageways. 
I agree entirely. Right. I was just joking around. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's a lot of reason to start climbing in here when, right. when we don't know what's on the other side of those doors. Absolutely. But check out the fountain. See what you see. Yeah. yeah. So the but fountain on our way to the on the way to the fountain, John. Anything like interesting on the floor, like paths or mosaics or anything? No, no, not really. Um, and there doesn't seem to be much. Um, there, there, there is no growth on the ground. Okay, so it's it's just like the stones themselves are just wet, um, uh, which you know it's not that unremar you know remarkable. But um, as you approach the fountain itself, it's it's it looks very utilitarian. It's very very well built. Um, it looks like it was meant to complement the the uh, decor of the chamber. So it's like worked stone, um, slight ornamentation, no language of any sort. Um, the center sprayer is is uh it's it's just a solid piece of like it's like a pillar of stone basically that has a number of different um jets coming off of it right uh, but oh, it is okay. not carved in any sort of likeness so like you know so like a statue like a little boy peeing or something like that right it's like <laughs> it's <laughs> that's it, too bad it, it, it's an opportunity lost <laughs> it'd be a hell of a stream <laughs> a lot of force <laughs> um but yeah yeah it's just like a uh a, a quite beautiful uh you know utilitarian uh sprinkler basically a sprinkler system um, is there is there a pool of water surrounding it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a basin. Uh, yeah. When look down inside, are, are, have people been throwing coins in there? Uh, no coins, unfortunately. Oh That's, man, <laughs> yeah. I was certain that was going to be there. <laughs> I bet you there's a dead elf looking up back at you, though. <laughs> Ew. What, what I miss, dead elf? Ew. No, I I made that up. So there is a um, there is a a very unique looking plant on the western wall, about two thirds of the way up. That um, has a large body, like a pitcher-shaped body that's about three feet tall by three feet wide. And it has large meteor tendrils that actually kind of come up and drape out over and are much longer than the <laughs> other tendrils, about 15 feet, and they drape down um, towards another, easily past, like, another balcony below it. He did oh, some that. rations. <laughs> if that's not a man-eating plant i don't know what is it's, it's, i mean the good news is probably not the man-eating it's probably just a dwarf and goblin eating plant yeah i mean i'm not worried about myself well uh, either way very dangerous you go first fair enough um cool uh are we still at the entrance uh, no, everyone's sort of... Uh, Squeegee is going around the perimeter, First. and Avaricious and Gorand are right at the edge of the fountain looking in. Okay, I was going to ask about the fountain. Uh, any discoloration, any smell, any s s indication that it's anything more than just water? Uh, no. not from not, not to from, drink it? Not from sight and smell, no. I'll take a, a little handful and I'll sip on it. It, it, it tastes good. There's a, there's a, it, it tastes like normal water. Yeah. Um, a little bit of like like mineraliness, like it, you know, like it's yeah. been sitting in stone for a while. A nice terroir. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, fertilizer. Nice, <laughs> there you go. Cool, um, I love that. I'm gonna uh, say. Can we do a close inspection. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, I'm gonna say a turn went by to get here and a turn to do what you've already done here. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Can we do a close inspection and found to look for any devices that may pertain to its function or? Uh, Hidden yeah. buttons, levers, etc. Yeah, Avaricious already looked into the fountain. Does okay. it, has not cool. seen anything of interest other than just the water itself. Um, it uh, is utilitarian in nature of excellent built, excellent make, but nothing. Uh, what is the closest? Uh, are are there any uh, on the first layer of balconies, sturdy looking vines that might function like a rope? I can try out. There seems to be plenty. You don't know how sturdy they are. Sure, sure, sure. But um, but there are David. What we were talking about, though, man, is we were talking about maybe we should check out, go through the doors on the north side, the double doors before we start scaling around in oh, here. Oh, I totally agree. Totally agree. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. can I go listen at those doors? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'll work my way around the perimeter to to the doors as well. Yeah, and I'm not walking anywhere near that bulbous, weird plant on the west side with the tendrils <laughs> hanging down. Gotcha, I understand. Taking the long way, <laughs> long way around, the eastern route. As you walk by, you smell you smell malt beer and beef on the bone. And you're like, <laughs> I've got to go check it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know this plant. You just give the tendrils a little tickle like that. They, like, they love this. All right, Goran, you, uh, you, you take the long way around to the northern doors. They are ebony. They appear to be uh, remarkably similar to the main entrance to the... Um, to the palace in general, but much smaller, as if they're okay. as if it's you know 
not a main entrance, you would say. Similarly carved? Uh, similarly carved, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are there handles? Faces, right? Uh, there are handles, yes. They are like basically metal handles. Um, doesn't appear to be uh, any sort of locking mechanism, but the doors are closed. Do they this open is different. In Sorry? Do they open in well, towards me or out? Uh, I, you know how modules are notorious for never telling you that. So whatever way you want them to open is how they open. <laughs> Look at the I would rather, they open, I would rather they open towards me. Sure. What I was wondering was, uh, just to clarify, so the front doors to the building that we sort of went around by going through the wall mm -hmm. is what you're talking about, that these yeah. look similar to. Not the door that we opened with the little sigil thing. Correct. Yep. Yeah. You got it. So these look like normal doors. They look okay. like normal doors that they're made out of ebony, which okay. is very, very strange. I right. will... Uh, I will... Nope. Yes, they do. Nope. They have the carvings, the same carvings that the other ones had. No, they do not. John just said... Oh, you, I said... <laughs> I asked you if they were similarly carved, and you said yes. I thought you meant like the way that those doors were shaped, but um, but no, they. Didn't. I'm sorry. I meant I meant the carvings on the on the doors, the no. faces that were on the no. ones. Other than the fact that they're ebony, they look unremarkable. Gotcha. Okay. How much do you think ebony doors are worth? Anyway, I'm going to listen at the door. Okay, go for it. I am going to hear nothing but my own farts. Okay. Um, you don't hear anything on the other side of the door. However. <laughs> as the you are out of the door here's you <laughs> yeah as you are the only person up on that uh side of the chamber right now um you uh hear some sort of uh shuffling sound like of of like moving earth coming from the uh towards the west turn side of the chamber like just like the, the that's sound, just me the sound of like like earth being turned over sort of but uh, happening at regular intervals, like, oh. like from the outside I, coming towards. No, yeah, no, no I, in the chamber. Inside, the I chamber. snap my fingers to get their attention, point to my ears, and then point at the thing in the west. Okay, so uh, all three of you, you guys can see that there is, like, so the walls of the chamber itself are kind of obscured by the fact that the the, the vines from the lower balconies are sort of draping it like a veil, like a veil curtain around okay. you know what i mean and you see that there is some sort of movement that is moving slowly closer to goran that it's kind of circling around the western part towards the north where goran is like behind those vines something very very isn't, large isn't that where i am uh, yeah squeegee yeah you're you're like at the west so if if it's basically cardinal goran's at the north squeegee you're directly at the west okay looking up Right, um, and then Vargan and Avaricios are sort of like at the south, but along the along the basin, uh, in the in the center of the room on the southern part of the basin, between Squeegee and Gorand, there is some okay. sort of massive sense of movement that is moving behind that veil curtain that is moving slowly and methodically towards Gorand. It is so large it looks like whatever it is 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 um, brushing the top the bottom of the first balcony. Right, it is very it's quiet. Like Gorn had to hear it, you know, but but then when your eyes are drawn to it, Squeegee, you're like, oh shit, what the fuck is that? Sorry, just a point of clarity. You said the veil curtain is like a curtain of vegetation. Yeah. Behind? Yeah. Gotcha. Like the the vines Hanging that are draping from down from the very first yeah. balconies all the way around are basically kind of form like a like like a hidden corridor <laughs> around them. It's just a gardener. It's fine. Uh, I'm gonna back away from the sound, John. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stop moving towards it and uh, ready my bow. It looks to be about nine feet tall. And Gordon, so you're moving back into the center of the room. It's going to be another one of those stone golem things, dude. Yeah, it's okay. it's going to be a goblin squash or whatever it is. I'm backing up. I don't Let's want anything see. to do with a nine-foot enemy. Are you <laughs> see, it's the disposition before we lose the arrows. So I'll say it may not be. No, I'm not going to shoot it either. yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Squeegee, but, are uh, you, Squeegee, are you moving back towards the center? Is everyone coalescing at the fountain? Yes. Yeah, basically, um, but with our backs to the open door to the exit. Yeah, yeah, basically. All right, so the southern. I was side. imagining just backing straight up. Yeah, uh, from where I, I don't want to let whatever that is get between us and the exit. Gotcha. I would, I would yeah. in fact say that I would like the fountain to be positioned between us and its location, even yeah. if that includes yeah. rotating. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, slightly. Yep, that's not a problem. Movement. 
So you're basically going to be rallying around where Matt and um, I'm yes. sorry, where Avaricio's uh, uh, yeah. was. So yeah, so there's like okay, My so Gorin, as you retreat back, and everyone's like, "What the fuck is going on?" It the 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 vines like part on the northern part, right, uh, the northern section, and this massive earthen slime draped mound of vegetation on two legs kind of steps oh, forward vaguely humanoid but um like with no discernible head two massive uh, uh you know limbs of of just rotting soil and vegetation and draped vines um and just the barrel bare description of some sort of head that kind of just juts directly out of its massive body um just stumbles forward and uh, uh, doesn't stumble at all just towards you a swamp thing is coming at us yeah um it is trailing a uh like a like a, a, a some sort of slick path of slime and vegetation as it kind of moves forward um and the whole thing is just sodden right there's no sort of umbilical to another source is there like it's not a, a vine connected no he's not tethered to anything behind him doesn't it doesn't appear to be bell. No. Okay, cool. All sorts of like brambles and twigs are kind of jutting out from it, all also sodden and rotting. You know, pieces of it are being left behind as it moves forward. Uh, would you say that it would you say that it shambles, John? It does. That would be the word <laughs> instead of stumbling. Yeah. Yeah. Shambling is uh, I'm gonna very say, would you describe word. it? Would you describe it say, as cyclopean? Uh, uh cyclopean mound like at all? Uh cyclopean I, I, might be might be overdoing it. Nine nine feet tall is quite quite big, but uh, it's okay. not. It's not Eldritch Horror say, level. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say, uh, "Hail, Guardian," and see if it responds. <laughs> it's moving, moving. Does it slowly. just have an even rate? Like it's not moving any faster than it was prior, right? No, but it's definitely moving towards you. John, I'm gonna retrieve the two flasks of oil that are in my backpack. Uh, okay. Burn that. I got a burn it. <laughs> Somebody light a torch. Gorin, Gorin, yeah, I'm not, I'm, Gorin, I will. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, my... hold on. Gorin, you can tell uh, very easily that the the thing is dripping wet, sodden. I know. Okay. I understand. Okay. I'm but gonna... I, I got to think that oil is going to help. I mean, I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna split and head in direct due east and see if it approaches me rather than them. If there's any sort of intention split between it, uh, okay. So it uh, so you you bolt the movement, and you see its its shaggy head just sort of you know like its whole bulk sort of like very slowly like regards you, you know, like it stops and looks, you know. And now it's just sort of like staying there in the chamber, and you can it sort of almost like gives like this low, like a slow motion sort of shake like a dog, but just. And like all bits of vegetation kind of fly off of it. Um and I will roll die here. Give me a sec. Uh oh. I hate it when you do that. All right. It <laughs> it it uh it slowly changes vector to, as it moves towards Varger. You guys want to check out the door behind it if it gets close enough to me and I'll just bait it. <laughs> Literally just have it walk towards me for a while. You have exactly you have one like sequence of like tell me what you want to do before we actually have to go into combat phase. Into combat, okay. okay. If if you know if that's what you'd want to do, it's coming. It's coming for you. I'm of the mind that it's so shambling and slow that we can just kind of outspeed it and don't have to directly confront it. But I I'm up to y'all's thoughts on that as well. Does, does it seem John in its approach so far? Does it it seems to have been moving fairly slowly? Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't know if that would continue that way, but okay, that's a start. You haven't been aggressive with it. You don't know yeah. what would happen. You know. Exactly. Yeah. My my yeah. thought process, and I don't again, I don't want to like overthink this, but my thought process was, if I can get its attention, you guys can either open the other set of doors, see what's behind it, or look for a way up, or look for for a way out without us necessarily having to uh, go fisty cuffs with the giant. <laughs> <laughs> veggie monster, but it's up to you guys. So we can try to burn it. I just don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, if he's if he's like uh, dis if if he seems distracted by multiple target places, and he's going towards you. It seems like we could like sneak or sneak over towards those uh, 
doors in the north. You can, yeah. Do you want to go to the doors in the north, or do you want to go up the vines? What do you want to do? I feel like we go to the doors in the north. the doors. Doors. Yeah. Okay, so the... Cool. uh, Varger, what are you doing? Are you just going to stay there as bait? I'm going to bait it. Okay. I'm going to bait it back, and I'm going to keep in mind if I see a vine that I could ascend as an escape, if I have to, where that is. So if there's a vine... There are vines all around you because you've Everywhere, gone towards the right. eastern side. So you. Can so I'm just. I'm just going to slowly. I'm going to outpace it, right? Yeah. And just try to keep its attention yeah. as much as I can. Yeah. And be loud and, and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'll just sort of like go around the circumference east from the east where it's following me south. Does that make sense? While yeah. they go west and north, I'm going to go east and south. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Cool. So it does. Cool. It's it stumps after you. Um, uh, as you yell at it to like over here, buddy. You know that sort of thing. Um, yeah. it, it shakes its head again. As if it's like a little bit irritated, mm-hmm. and um, it actually picks up the pace, and it starts to come move move towards you uh, quite rapidly. Not quite as quickly mm-hmm. as you're as you're moving. You're still able to outpace it, um, but sure. that leaves the opening for Goran, Squeegee, and Avaricios, who slip around the side of the western side of the fountain and uh, through the doors. Um, so let's just go. Nice. With- Did it seem to be uh, like bothered by sound, or? Yes, that his is. shouting got its attention. Like it, like, seemed, it seemed to be irritated. Well, you could saw you saw it pick up its pace and shake whenever um, Varger started to yell loudly. Um, hmm. As you guys whip through, uh, you guys are going to try to push the doors, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah open okay. the doors. Yeah. All right, so you push through the open doors. Open the doors. Um, you you find yourself outside the pouring rain. <laughs> all over you're like instantly drenched oh hell um, oh man <laughs> what you what you find out here is that you are in a walled garden of about eight feet tall and you actually recognize where you are because of what's directly lying there um that uh the uh there the northeastern wall has been blown out and is in ruins and looks over the banks of the um of the swift river at exactly the point where it splits off around the palace. And whenever you were looking at that area from the other bank of the river, when you were approaching here. Where um, the obelisk is? The obelisk, yes. So you are actually in front of this obelisk now. Uh, and once again, that is only um, uh, 10 feet tall, right? And unlike the, the full length of the, of the obelisk of the sun. Uh, in front of you, so a shame we don't have Osric. The garden. We put the, that twice so far today. The garden here is also extremely verdant. Um, it's being soaked currently by by heavy rainfall, um, but there is a, there's a like a riot of plants and stuff like that all around you that you're basically tramping in right now. Uh, also, kind of springing up around the the ruined obelisk itself. Um, the obelisk. Uh, Give me one second. Uh, oh, when it broke off, are like both pieces there, or is the top missing? Would it? What? What? What do you mean, both pieces? So oh, you said the obelisk, the obelisk broke right at about ten feet. Yeah. Oh, oh, so yeah, yeah. The no, the 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 remains of it are not there. No, um, which is kind of strange. Give me a second here. Huh. Uh, hmm. So, but it does have similarly to the obelisk of the sun, which is what I'm looking up right now. Um, it's still like the, the, the intact portion of it at exactly the same height as the obelisk of the sun. There is that deeply incised image of an onk that's about a foot tall. Mm-hmm. And, um, it has the exact same description. Okay. Now, uh, there, unfortunately, none of you guys can read Mithric anymore but um you would probably remember from whenever um osric translated for you that it said the beacon shall be revealed to those who bring midday life to the sun the moon and the stars sun moon and stars there's no there's no sun moon or stars on the obelisk right it's only the ankh plus the writing yes correct yeah right okay so we're outside We've seen the obelisk. Behind us, the the mulch pit is trying to eat Varger. Yes, yeah. So, Varger, um, you are currently running around the perimeter from um, east to running south. Running around the road, uh, buying them time. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what do you do at this point? 
Uh, I mean, I'm testing the upward bounds of its speed, literally, uh, and just continue to try to keep his attention while they waiting for them to signal either that they're staying out there and I should come or coming back in or whatever. All right. So it's pounding after you at this point. You now have to, if you want to uh, keep away from it, go at a full run in order to maintain your, uh, to maintain like a, a lead over it. Um, and it's reaching forward with its massive club-like arms at the same time as it's sort of chasing around you. Um, uh, there's, uh, as you're going around the perimeter too, it appears to have some sort of rudimentary intelligence because instead of just sort of following you in exactly the same path around the corner, it actually moves towards the center of the room in order to try to cut you mm. off. Um, at this point, um, uh, you, they kind of take you by surprise, you know, as it sort of like yeah. moves off. Um, and, uh, but you, you, you have enough presence of mind to like, you know, to stagger your speed, speed or stop or whatever you want to do. So, um, Okay, if it looks like I'm a little bit in trouble, I'm going to. Uh, oh, go ahead, Ted. So, uh, I don't know if we decided on which way the doors open, but it does. Does it look like from our side, John, that if he came through, we could close them quickly and barricade them in any way? Is there anything like handles on our side we could? You, you wouldn't have time to barricade. It would be like the classic thing where like he could escape through the doors, no problem, and you could close them, and then like the the creature would be like doosh, like right there. You know what I mean? Right, and we don't have any way to put a broom uh, handle through the door handles or anything like that. You uh, also might be trapped in that garden, which isn't a necessarily. Yeah. I'm gonna. Mm, I'm gonna try to the... climb a vine. Right on. Okay. John, the, the the wall is broken. Like we could we could run out. You could run yeah, out, but we'd like end would, up in the river. You fall in the river. Yeah. And that's. Oh, oh you yeah. Said it was instant death because of the speed and the rain last session. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Didn't know uh, yeah. It was right on no, the edge of the river. Not nice. You're right at the point where there's a decision to be made there. If you look to your left, which is the western part of the river, that's the Death River. The eastern one, though, um, <laughs> somehow is much more... Um, uh, actually, you know what? I'm wrong looking at it here, just the way that it's... Uh, you know what? Let me switch. This is important, so let me switch to Owlbear here for folks at home. Um, if you're looking at Owlbear... Let me find my mouse. Okay. Uh... Okay, you guys are like right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, follow my line here. This part of the river here is su su super bad. Here, though, um, it is uh, much more tame. Okay. So it's oh. still it's still fast moving, but somehow you're not quite sure. Um, it is not ideal. It's not great. Sure. Um, but um, it is. There's a chance that you might be able to swim it. Um, it also stands to reason, too. Remember when you looked here at these docks and you were wondering, like, well, how do those work if the river's death, right? Um, mm -hmm. it, it looks like, you know, this was these were placed here because of its location along the quieter part of the river. Right. And you just have to be right. very certain we're going down this side and not getting swept back into the death side. That's yeah, perfect. yeah, exactly. I think yeah. in the moment... It, well, climb the vine. Yeah. I'm going to climb the vine. Climb the vine. That may still be the, our best out, but I think just... As the narrative is flowing, it makes more sense that I would be like, okay, I'm going up this vine now while y'all are like looking at the river, probably. Yeah, you are like a little bit of a bind right now. It's yeah. like you, you got to get like off this floor of this chamber yes. um, or else it's going to. So I'd like to go up to an accessible balcony through a vine that seems like I can scramble up before it gets to me. Gets okay. To the vine. Cool. So you're not one of the meaty vines to the Straight to the meat's heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do it. Okay, so you basically have to get up a vine like immediately um, because yeah. you know that climbing the vine itself is not going to take you out of its reach if you waited any longer. So um, so you have to shimmy up the vine. Uh, I am going to make you make your climb walls roll purely as a substitution cool. for being able to shinny up like quick. Um, so if you fail cool. this, um, we will enter into initiative. Cool. I'm rolling right now. Uh, give me one sec. Oh, sorry. That's okay. That's okay. I just got to turn on the dice for folks at home. Okay, what did we get? Four. I got a yeah. four, and I have uh, five oh, pips five and Oh, yeah. okay. So you did it. All right. That's good. So you uh, shimmy on up. Um, and shimmy on up. <laughs> yeah. So it uh, as as you move up to the first balcony, okay, and you kind of flip yourself over the side. Um, uh, it comes up below you, and with its massive arms, it grabs the vines and just and like yanks as hard as it can. It just 
and like just shreds them. Um, and okay. they... <laughs> so I think it's aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> One way trip. And it okay. rips those off. Now it's it's about nine feet tall, so its head basically brushes the bottom of that balcony. So with its massive, um, uh, so with like we'll say nice. with one one hand it rips the vine, <laughs> and with the other one it takes its massive uh, its other the other limb comes up on top and slams down on the balcony. Sure. Right, and you can see like uh, stone like explodes everywhere. Um, so I need you Hell to make yeah. me a uh, saving throw versus um, a breath weapon. Getting wrecked. Okay, versus breath. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> I have to. I have to remember what that looks like. Okay, breath attacks. I was sixteen. Okay, so you just want to. You want to hit sixteen or higher. Ooh. <laughs> it sounds like you Ooh. want to do that a lot. It's one of the really? one of the weak points oh. of the thief. That is for sure. <laughs> what do we get? Fifteen. Oh, so close. oh, painfully close. All right, it's not that huge of a deal. Well, yeah. it depends. Depends. Well, You're only first level, so let's see. I'm second right? level. It's... I'm second level. You take two hit points of damage from flying stone shards. Ooh. All right. I'm um, going to. When this happens, go. It's a fire! <laughs> and you guys can hear that commotion it's... in the other room too. What did you say? It's a fighter. I mean, you know, just... it's a fight, right? Okay. I, I, so I'm looks not... like they have a guard dog. Now, <laughs> yeah. Let's close. Let's close that door. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Well, you. Bye, Parker. <laughs> so when you say that, as soon as we see him climbing, yeah. Squeegee wants to start looking around out here to see if there's a way to climb the outer walls up to that same level that he's at. Because sooner or later, smart. that guy's going to come through the door. Uh, so, uh, on, so as soon as I see him climb, I'm like, "Oh, can we get up there on so this side of the wall?" It's all dressed Arcantian stone. Um, there's nothing that is obvious. Like it would take effort, uh, and you guys aren't thieves, right? It's it's not sheer, right. you know. There's you know it's it's you right. know, it's crumbling and stuff like that, but it's it's much more intact than the rest of the than the palace. So it's you know it's tough, right? Like like, like right. picture like the side of the pantheon. Could you could you climb the side of the pantheon <laughs> unaided? It's difficult, mm. you know. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, Varger, yeah, I could barely climb the stairs, John. Come on, <laughs> that's the age we're at now. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my big Varger? Um. You see that uh, the balcony that uh, uh, that draping down um, are some of those. They're not right next to you, so it's okay. I'm not trying to screw you over. There are some of those um, those meaty tendrils from the pitcher plant up above, <laughs> right? And as the in reaction to apparently the commotion or the violence or whatever, um, some of those actually shake a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's a slight little shake. Just um, a little wiggle. Yeah. Now you can see too that interestingly enough that the balcony that you're standing on. And above you as well, that um, the plants themselves are actually like in planters. So, and the balconies are actually uh, like a mesh, like a, like a, like you can actually see through the bottom of them. You, you know what I mean? Like there's sort of like Ooh. a metal, like a metal mesh almost. Yeah. Um, sure. And there are there are individual like uh, stone and ceramic planters that all of these plants are sort of sitting in. Uh, the pitcher plant was a lone exception that Squeegee noticed. It seemed to be freestanding on one of these balconies. Now, as you are looking upwards, trying to plan your route here, right, you can see the glint of multiple shining objects, larger than coins, up on the same platform that the uh, the pitcher plant is on. Um, I you knew it. Seem to be yeah. seem to be scattered <laughs> around by something that is obscuring the bottom mesh of that platform. That looks to be the um the foundation of a great stone seat david where do you think those shiny things came from <laughs> <laughs> earlier versions of david no doubt exactly. <laughs> we, we shall we shall see uh one other question john yep. again sorry that you've had to describe this chamber nine thousand times no problem balconies <laughs> various sorts bridges chaos balcony yep. to balcony uh -huh. doorways Going somewhere from the balcony, or is the balcony no. sheer wall? Sheer wall. Okay. Yeah. All right, baby. <laughs> but there are connecting bridges. There are connecting bridges, and obviously vines to get up to there if you wanted to get up there. And one more question. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the vine I just climbed supported my weight, but it went to a planter. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's actually true. Do I have a Do I have a sense that if I start climbing another one, the planter is just going to topple over me, or is it or is it traversable? 
We'll say like so, they are implanters, but we'll say like the vines over the centuries have like or the not centuries, whatever, um, have like um curled around like the edges of the balconies, uh more stable. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Also, yeah, yeah, like yeah, and yeah. with that mesh underneath kudzu, the roof would go through. Exactly, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, cool. So, so I'm not just right. immediately right. gonna like grab it, you know, like Tom and Jerry out and then just fall. No, no, I'm not gonna well, scream I'm not gonna scream with that. You're a professional climber, Varger, so you would be able to tell something yeah. that would hold your weight, and you wouldn't be foolish enough to take something that wouldn't. So I'm not going to screw you like that. Question is, David, could you push a planter over onto this guy's head? Another thought I had, right? So I can... And to make him a very squashy mound. Mm -hmm. um, I have an axe, so I could cleave it from any entanglements in the mesh and just try to throw the planter if I wanted to. But before we do that, the moment right now is he's just busted the side of this rock wall. Yes. I've taken right. some 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 splash damage. I'm yep. not going to stay there, but I'm aware of the fact that all of you guys are outside this door. Right. I've gone, hey, there's a guard dog, right? You guys, you guys have turned out and gone, oh shit, right? Yeah. Do I continue? I what I'm going to do is like climb to another balcony, mm -hmm. but I'm not trying to abandon you guys. So I'm climbing no, 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 with, just... with the idea that I am taking its attention, so either you guys can escape and then I follow your escape, or so you guys can get a good vantage to attack it. And that's sort of what I'm looking for, for as like a cue from you guys as I do what I'm about to do, which so is go to another battle. You have no, you cannot see them, Barker. So you're going to yeah. have to make that decision on your own, and they're going to have to decide on their own. So, but at this yeah. point, though, because violence has basically ensued, um, sure. I want everyone, we're going to roll initiative, but don't do it yet. Cool. Um, does anyone want to, uh, I think we've only got one spellcaster, right? Yeah, Evericios, do you want, to, you don't, he doesn't actually have Never mind, I, I don't have to ask. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Uh, John, I can't <laughs> real, real quickly as well, I should announce at the beginning of the session, Avaricios actually did uh, get enough experience to gain a level. However, he has not returned to a safe haven. So until you take a rest at a safe haven, you cannot benefit from the new level. And any additional experience you gain is wasted. Mm -hmm. so you get back to the safe haven. Oh, we didn't know that. That's in the rules. It's in the rules. Oh, oh. Been been from my rule book to come from the memories. Kickstarter. <laughs> Every single one of us are, are a ripe 20 something with a razor sharp memory. <laughs> Avaricios, however, cannot cast his first spell until he is second level. That's the way clerics work back in the day. So he cannot. So there's also, no spells. Now, well, uh, we should point out, too, that his asshole party members wouldn't let him go back to rest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's what roll. Are you gonna for, do? I'm going to roll for initiative. Here we go. Uh, I've only got 276 XP. I got a so, six, so know, suck it. <laughs> Oh, so oh. and beat John. Somebody I think do it, I think David should roll because it's kind of his, uh, right, his party at this point. Yeah, that's a two. A two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Close to six. Uh, so guys, I think we got to draw it away from David. So with, uh, mm -hmm. with I, I think we go back and run around. Hold on. So uh, yeah. Hold on. So with me uh, winning initiative, that means I get to the Shamley Mound gets to to. Uh, oh, react react to you. It. So what do you? Yeah, sorry. So what do you guys decide to do? What are you generally planning to do, David? You're climbing I up am, higher, right? I am going higher. I'm going up okay. immediately after being attacked. Yeah. You guys I, have I heard think... noise, but you have not seen anything. Because oh, we, we closed the doors, right? Oh yeah, we did kind of close the doors. Oh, you did. I did right. yell that it's fighting, so they do know that it's attacking me for what it's yeah. worth. Yeah. I I think maybe while it's distracted, like focused on him, trying to get like get him. We could scamper back around to the door in the south because our treasure, we have treasure. We have that, that tapestry that we, that yeah. we, if we can get out of here with that, at least we got something. Sure. Let's skirt around while, yeah. he's, while he's distracted and yeah. um, trust Perfect. in Varger's ability to climb and avoid the thing up high. Okay. So you guys are not going to engage. Okay. So the Shambling Mound um, is going to attempt to grab Varger before he can make his ascent. And he has one initiative, so he does have a chance to do that. Okay? Um, so but he sees... Any... Yeah, go, go, go. The Shambling Mount basically knows that this is his last, last chance, and so in desperation, he's going to lunge upward with sure. one with one arm and attempt to grab you before you can move off. Okay? <laughs> so okay, cool. <laughs> this is actually... this is It's not good, but it's it's better than you thought because um, normally it would get actually two attacks, but I'm going to say, like, because yeah. it's attempting to, like, reach, like, one last... Because as you're scampering, it's just going to get one attack. Cool. Cool. All right, that here we go. Great. All right, can't wait. What's your AC? <laughs> <laughs> my AC. What is my AC? This is not something. Oh, it's low, baby. It's Probably. ten. <laughs> it's actually a. It's ten. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it it needed a three to hit you. 
and I got a two, and I rolled, I rolled a two. <laughs> for, for, for the audience to know, I do not have armor on. <laughs> I made a choice, and the choice was, if I'm in combat, I'm already dead. <laughs> yeah, well, you're doing your best to stay out of it, I'll give you that. Uh, but, um, yeah, it just happened to win a ship, but I had a horrible roll, so, like, I mean, it is... Wow. Like you, you tear up yeah. just at the last second as as this foot, like as this uh, limb slams down on the balcony again, uh, but just uh, out of its reach. Uh, it still has not made any sort of vocal sound at all, right? Which is kind of unnerving in itself. Um, all right, so uh, that was it. It's basically there's no eyes, but its head is sort of turned towards you and watching you as uh, you guys. Now it's your turn. Um, so from what I understand, Varga, you're going to scamper up to the next level. Yes, and and survey if there's a bridge that connects me to an opposite end or anything like that. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so there is actually here, there is a bridge that can lead you upwards to a, another balcony. Do you want to do that? Do I solve movement? Yeah, it's your turn now. You haven't done anything. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would get up, and if I don't see anything obvious at my feet, I'm going to pursue the bridge to just cl get further distance between me and this guy. Okay, and then Gorn. I'm still, like, you know, he's watching me, so. Yeah. Goran Squeegee never is here. You're moving around and escaping, right? Yeah, I think the idea is we we open the door and we peek and we see it's still trying to get David. So yes. we take our opportunity, bust through, go around the long way away from the creature. Mm -hmm. Maybe bang um, on although, our shields and stuff like that too to try yeah, and... I was going to say, if we see it looks like we can distract it away from David, giving him an opportunity... Then we should t we should do that. Yeah. You can certainly do that I now with your movement in the space of the chamber itself. You would not be able to exit the room. You would be basically at the end of your turn. You'd be like right right near the exit. Yeah, is that cool? Even if we're sprinting. And is he near the exit too? Like he? I, no, I don't know where on the circle he is. He's no. on the western. He's side. on the western side. Yeah. Okay. But if you guys are going to yeah. go all the way around, um, you know the the chamber's got to yeah. be somewhere around like fifty feet. So, you know, yeah. it basically take your turn to get all the way over there. Can I make yeah. another suggestion, guys, here, too? Because, um... Get hit with fire. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. So I had already retrieved those two flasks of oil, so I'm assuming that they're in, like, kind of like a belt patch, pouch kind of thing. Why don't we douse the lantern? Because we can't afford to throw a lantern at this thing. <laughs> well, right? yeah, the lantern's oh, it's already been doused. Anyway. No, it's done. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So why don't we all light torches? Because instead of our regular hand weapons, because... And then we have oil flasks. And if it starts to chase us, we can spill the oil on the floor and light it on fire, and that will probably keep it away. Yeah, oil's still going to burn oh, if there's moisture. Yeah. I'm not talking about yeah. throwing the oil on the creature, because uh, I think John already kind of telegraphed that it's so wet and oil and water yeah. don't mix, right? It's probably not going to burn, but will it actually go into an area that is on fire? I don't think it will. And, and it might be afraid of enough... Of a weapon, yeah. And it might be afraid mm -hmm. enough of our torches... To just stay away yeah. from us in general. Okay, so pulling out a torch. My question, Go ahead. Yeah, my question to you, Mike, is like, when do you think we're doing that? It, before we go in the room? I would or say we before, get... we go, before we go in the room. We have to be so ready. Right to... now, instead of running away, we light torches. And that's this our turn. This turn, I think we spend lighting torches, or at least one of us lights a torch, right? I'm still running the bridge, have... so I will have his attention for what it's worth. Right. You can yeah, keep on game. Okay, we stay here. We light okay. torches. Okay. Next okay. turn, we run with lit torches. We throw down the oil if we have to. Right. Who is not using I, a shield? I have a shield. <laughs> Obviously, not I, me. Also, I, I also have a shield. Oh, so all three of us have a shield. So um, we can all hold a shield and hold a torch. And then, yep. what are we? How are we gonna? Who's gonna carry the oil? Why don't you guys carry? Why don't you guys um, have the torches lit, and I will have oil flasks in my hand to pour out into the hallway if we need to. So I don't have any torches, because I can see in the dark. I will give you one of my torches. What a nice gesture. I know, right? That's not true what they say about dwarves at all. Okay, so you're going <laughs> to... You're, you're Why gonna are pull, you so racist? You're pulling out torches, hey. is that what I'm hearing? Torches are out? Yeah. Yes. Two torches. Yeah, we're not... Okay. I do have a tinderbox, so I'll start lighting okay. torches as All he's right. pulling them out. Yeah. Sounds great. Got it. So Initi that's our turn, John. Got it. Initiative. I got a six again. Ed, you roll. I hate you so oh. much, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll give it a go here. Uh, boop. 
And for the folks at home, I rolled a two. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. So, so that was nice knowing David. You know. <laughs> hey, listen. If I just have to keep going up, <laughs> it's fine. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man. All right. Are you the, just, the, are you... the thing about these digital dice is you can see that die rolling on the screen, you know, and it almost was a six, and then it decided to be a two. And Barger, you're um, you're <laughs> continuing to move up. I am uh, presumably running across to another uh, uh, balcony. Yeah. Okay. Are you are... so? Are you actually trying to go up, or are you just going back I and was forth? Just, I thought I was going. Room? I didn't. I don't. I didn't realize that some of the balconies went up. I thought it was a lateral thing. If some of them go, I thought like... you were climbing. There, there are bridges and there are balconies. The bridges connect the balconies, uh, but there there happened to be one that actually ascended to another balcony okay. on a higher level. Which I will which naturally just, just go up. Then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Because I was trying to flee okay. from. All right, I don't okay. know if this guy's going to start climbing, so I was going to use the opportunity for this round to continue to have his attention and go in a direction. Uh, right. That's basically all I was thinking. Yeah, so... Uh, I, I, make I just want to make... Okay. We need to take a step back and get a little bit more organized, okay? So we, right. remember that okay. we are in phases, and the way that I do my combat, right, is that if, yes. if whoever, yeah. whoever wins, they get to hear what the other side is going to attempt to 100%. do first, right? Mm -hmm. So you have, to, yes. you have to kind of tell me what you're going to do. So here's so you're, what you're, I'm going to... So. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to reach the destination of the next balcony. Yeah. I'm going to turn face, see what these guys are doing, as well as survey this balcony. Mm -hmm. I am either... I mean, honestly, I'm going to wait, is what I'm really... Unless there's, like, something immediate at this balcony that I discover, what I'm going to do is wait and see what happens, because I'm either going to take the one segment of rope I have left and, and like, rappel down to, the, to escape as fast as I can. Yeah. Or, I don't know, just, like dodge and hide and see if it's going to follow me, right? Okay. I'm basically seeing what the threat level is. So I'm not really doing anything other than surveying this round. Gotcha. These okay. guys, I don't know. All right. There are three of you guys, or what do you uh, plan to do? Okay. What is your I'll objective speak. by the end of the round? What do you want, help, have hoped to have accomplished? Okay. We are going to open the doors, and we are going to move towards the exit as fast as we can mm -hmm. with lit torches. Uh, Avaricios and Squeegee have the lit torches. I have the an open flask of oil yep. and my shield. Mm -hmm. And as we go through the room, we're gonna make a loud, a lot of noise. Yeah. Um. Well, I don't know if torches being at shields is as effective, but whatever. We'll make a lot of noise and we'll try to draw the creature's attention away from us. If it continues to follow us into the hallway, mm -hmm. then we are going to pour oil into the hallway and then light it on fire. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, perfect. We, the one thing and I have to clarify: Are we gonna are we gonna circle around the edge behind the curtain wall, or are we gonna go right through the middle? Um, I was gonna suggest <laughs> going through the middle and just you know, we, I mean, we can't. I don't want to actually climb through the fountain, right? But yeah. making you know the straightest line possible That's on the, the eastern fountain, side of the fountain, 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 kind of thing. Got it. Yeah. Got opposite it. the right. opposite the monster. I understand. Yeah. I got it. He's okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the. Uh, the Shanley Mountain One initiative. Um, so it is basically sort of silently raging underneath you, Varger, as you uh, attempt to go ever higher. Um, however, uh, as you attempt to go up up that uh, bridge, um, as uh, you do so, uh, a couple things you notice first of all that you are getting a clear bead on something. There is there definitely appears to be some sort of throne on that uh, on that balcony above you now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, however, your attention is distracted by a large meaty tendril <laughs> that comes that comes whipping at God you. Goddamn meaty tendril, dude! The goddamn meaty tendril. I had a feeling, had a feeling that that would be entering the fray pretty soon. Yeah. Another yeah. Okay. Saturday night for murder. It hits you. Nice. Um. Okay. So. Ow. It um so this this uh this green tendril whips around your right leg, and yanks hard as your as right as you achieve that second balcony, um and basically whips uh, whips your leg out from underneath you and you slam onto the ground and it begins yep. to drag and then you feel your leg being pulled up into the air, yep. as you are dragged bodily up into the air. Um. Uh, let me just check here. I mean, on the I on the bright side, you're getting away from the the. Mouth. Yeah, yeah. I was like, 
Yes, uh, you I are. Just I know what I'm yeah. doing with my axe next round. <laughs> yeah, so um, you are, you are able to hang on to whatever you have in your hands, uh, but you are you are literally lifted up into the air as you are being slowly pulled upwards towards this giant pitcher body. Cool. Um, uh, and yeah, mm -hmm. the, it, the shambling mound is still sort of mindlessly raging below you as the doors blow open and uh, in comes the uh, the the fire brigade. Mm -hmm. Um, as you, yeah, so you guys are all yelling and screaming and beating shields and all that sort of stuff as you, do we um, see him dangling? Is like, that's something we can see. Yeah, you definitely not? can see it. Yeah. And Varga is probably not silent about it either. <laughs> <laughs> um, you see me looking um, very deliberately yeah. at my axe right now and my leg. <laughs> the mound, the mound, uh, uh, whips its body around you know it doesn't seem to have like a neck right so it's sort of like when every time it regards someone it has to move its entire body and it, it moves around and looks at you and does that shake but much more violently this time more like a real shaggy dog like Woof. um and it looks like it's you know you guys want initiative so you're able to get all the way to the other side of the room no um, he ru he ran in oh i see yeah uh right. yeah so it's your turn um but by the end of the round it looks like it's probably going to head towards you um, but you guys are at the door right now. Okay. That's where you are at the end of the round. Okay. Uh, let's roll, okay. roll for initiative. I'll roll this Ooh, time. I'm rolling rocks. All right. Oh. Come on. Oh, bitch. Gorin, mm. what did you do? Four. Four. <laughs> Missed oh. it by that much. Okay. What do you guys, what do you guys generally plan to do by the end of the round? I'm going to hack at this meaty thing as hard as I can with my axe to try to free myself. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and Varger, I think Varger, we're gonna hold on, hold on. Uh, telegraphing yep. Varger. Um, it looks like if you hack successfully, um, that there will be a roll involved to see whether or not you fall onto the balcony below you, or if you just fall yes. straight to the ground. I figured. Okay, all right. Just want to make that clear. Okay, yes. The rest of you guys, what do you plan? You to do? you could consider trying to hack the pitcher pot once you arrive at it. Uh, is it pulling me to a pitcher pot or to a giant? Wait, redescribe the the meaty thing. So it's Sorry. main it's main body. Is a three foot tall, three foot wide, like a uh, pitcher, like a like you know what I mean, like some sort of plant pitcher, of which these tendrils are kind of coming out and then draping oh, over the true. sides. One yes. of those tendrils is now grabbing you and you pulling it up, up towards its main body. Okay. Uh, all right. I mean, I don't know what's too cheesy to ask. I understand that there's a just before I make a decision. Is it fair to say that I would have a sense of There's a percent chance I'll land on the balcony versus the floor. Yes. However, the amount of time, which is hard for me to triangulate, between me being roughly above the balcony and dangling free fall in the air yeah. is affecting that decision. You know what I mean? Like, no, I just so like, I'll give you the percentage. Uh, you have a 60% chance of hitting the balcony, um, which case you would take a single point of damage. Um, and you have a 40% chance of going all the way to the ground, which you'll, I mean, it's what, how many points do you have left? Five hit points. Five hit points. Oh, yeah. Uh, so oh yeah, you're second level. I Ooh. forgot you're actually a little bit beefy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So you would take um, you would take two d six. So it's it's not good, but you could you you could survive, but um, you definitely want to hit the balcony instead. <laughs> but there's only a forty percent chance. Forty percent chance. To... I have one more question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can I break a lantern into the face of this fucking plant and set it on fire? Or is that like not a thing mechanically that can be done? You can do it, but you have to wait till you're up on up. No, I know, I know. I'm like, <laughs> do I, you, That's my current debate. Do you can I tell that just like at the if you don't do anything, if you just let it pull you up, um, at the next next round you will be up at that balcony level. Okay, okay. I'm I'm going to because why not? Why not? <laughs> Yellow. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull my lantern out and try to burn this fucker out from the source. Why not? Why not? So you know that that means you have to wait. You can pull out your lantern. I'm going to wait. I'm going to pull the lantern out, and then I'm going to I'm going to ready and wait as this thing pulls me up towards that that top balcony. Yeah. Okay. With the idea, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to get into a position where I can like smash and hold on to that balcony and okay. not fall. Yeah. I got. I, I got your plan. Light it, uh, light it on the way up. All right. I don't know. You guys yeah. have lost initiative, but uh, yeah. I want to know what you guys plan to do. You guys are at the door right now. You've got your lit torches and your oil flasks. Oh, we're, so we're at the door to the hallway? Yeah, to the hallway. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I think the plan is to get into the hallway and, and light the fire, the right, hallway, Mike? Yeah, right. Yeah. It, well, if dumb, it chases us fine. into the hallway, I, I mean, I wasn't going to waste the oil, which is dubious effectiveness, right? Like, we're not sure. Right. But basically, right. it was to keep it from hunt, chasing us down the hallway. You know? Yeah, so one, one of us should throw oil, the other which should, should set it on fire if he comes towards us. Right. Okay. So, obviously, in this edition, John, there's not really a ready action. Um, right? So, like, we're ready to do that if it starts chasing us, I guess. Yeah, basically, it's moving. It, it, it got the jump on you, right? So it's sort of like you've got a plan in mind, but it's moving very, very quickly um, right. uh, towards you. Now, the, the good thing is, is that this actually might work out for you anyways, because it can't get to you by the end of its movement, by the end of the round. But it's going to, it's going to, uh, it's going to move as far, as far as it possibly can. It's going to be very, very close to you by the time that um, you uh, do what you want to do. Okay, so, yeah, so it turns around, it looks at you, and it's like, <laughs> it pounds towards you. So you're like, oh, fuck, <laughs> as your torches are shaky. Um, at the same time, the uh, the the tendril vine thing, uh, Varger, uh, starts to pull you up. <laughs> and you are upside down as you are, um, uh, and, it, it, and it's you can see it's like moving a lot more quickly now as it yanks you up, and you see the uh as you kind of you know remember you're upside down right so <laughs> you've got to come up and you and you see this thing approach from underneath and um you see this bulbous pulsating thing it looks very much like um like an alien egg from, pulsating like, is like, never good you know like prometheus like, like the like the yeah. egg is like bleh, bleh, and it kind of opens up right um it's like <laughs> that except there are actual tendrils coming out of this thing and as you kind of come eye level with um with the the sack itself it, uh -huh. it it makes that same sound that as it as it as it opens yeah, yeah, wide yeah, of, course, of course of course to take you the into maw. its maw yeah. yeah okay okay exactly. okay exactly so now it's your right, right. now it's your guy's turn um so uh yeah whatever whatever uh, order you want wasn't this the creature in expedition to the barrier peaks <laughs> it's definitely on the cover i remember that yeah 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 mm -hmm. Oh right. my god, I love this. This is awesome. Okay, um, okay. John, quick question for you, John. Mm -hmm. Based on, as we're running towards the door, and the, the shambling mount, I think, is kind of trying to cut us off, right? Pretty much, yeah. It looks like we're going to be ahead of it. Yeah, you guys uh, can definitely drop back through that door at any point now. Right, so what I'm wondering is, in Squeegee's, as he quickly assesses the situation, does it look like he could... Is there any way he could double back unseen by the shambling thing and try and uh, um, get up to help Varger? Uh, like if if the thing chase continues to the doorway, but Squeegee just goes the other direction at the last second, you know, hiding behind vines and so on along the perimeter, can he double back without being seen? That would be something that Varger, it, that Varger could definitely do. Squeegee, you could, you could definitely attempt to do it. Um, but you would only have like a one in six chance because it's looking right at you guys. You know what I mean? But there, that's but, what I'm getting at. But if there it's is but looking there, right at me. But there is a lot of vegetation, is why I'm giving you a chance in the first place. Like if, like Squeegee, like if you were behind Gorn and Avaricios for a sec, you know, for instance, there's a bunch of vegetation. I'm imagining around you. that I am. Yeah. Then, um, then because I'm slow, I, I would give you a roll. I would give you a one in six chance of being able to escape. Yeah, its that's that's not the kind of odds I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, that's not a sure thing. That's not and, a sure thing. And uh, Squeegee likes a sure thing, so he's going to go through the door. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shall we, yeah. Shall we go? Shall we uh, start our little uh, campfire? It's your turn. Yeah. Quick. Yeah. Okay, yep. Go through the door and start the campfire. I think. All right. We back through the door, John, and I, as we go, I'm pouring oil. I don't know what the rule is for oil on a in an area. It used to be like a ten by ten square area type sure. thing, but you tell me. That's fine. Um, anyway, so I I make a puddle of oil, mm -hmm. backing light, away from I'll it, light it. Yeah. and then he lights it. Okay, great. Okay, so first of all, um, if I didn't mention it before, I need all of you guys. Okay, so, uh, mark off a torch. Everyone had a torch. Gorn, I need you to. Well, mark I had my I had Mike's torch. Okay. Yeah. Do we waste the torch doing that? Can you not just touch the oil with I'm the torch and then keep the torch? Uh, yeah, sure. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, so I'll mark off the flask of oil. I have another one if we need it. I have some too. It's fine. Yeah, mark off the flask of oil. Okay. Yeah. So you're now the the thing is coming like right at you. So it takes a lot of presence of mind to like actually do this, right? You know, they go fuck in here, and it and it you know it it bursts into flame like that that area bursts into flame. So um, 
uh, that now the thing is nine feet tall. So it still is like sort of towering over the, the actual flame that's, that is created. Um, and, uh, you, the, and as you guys, uh, ignite the flame, you, the, the rest of you guys are also backing out into the corridor, correct? So the three yep. of you guys are going to be out there. Okay. Got I'm it. making a lot of noise while we do it. All right. It's still coming forward. You don't know how it's going to react to the fire until next round. Vargert, uh, what do you do? <laughs> okay. I got that dog in me. All right. Uh, Vargert says, Towards the I hang, thou all destroying but unconquering plant. Uh, to the last I grapple with thee, from hell's heart I stab at thee. For hate's sake, I spit my last breath. Sink nice. all coffins and hearses into one coffin <laughs> pool, and since neither can be mine, let me then tow to pieces while still chasing thee. <laughs> and tied to thee, thou damned plant, thus I give you the fire. And I slam my hand as deft as I can into this gaping maw. And what I mean by that is, if there's any chance I miss getting it in there by throwing it, I mm -hmm. will stick my arm in it and sacrifice the arm. Uh, Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. I want to assure that I am slamming this to burn the center of this thing. Gotcha. The minute it's, it's possible. Okay. I don't know if that's a devil's bargain worth offering or not, but I'm throwing it out there. <laughs> so you can, um, at this point, because it's your turn and it's dragging you upwards, it isn't, you, you're not dangling above its maw quite yet. You're like eye to okay. eye with it. You know what I mean? Like you're right, right. right at its level. So you can certainly, um, you can crash that lantern or, or attempt to like lob it into its maw, but you, you can't stuff your hand into it. Okay. Do you know what I mean? But you can still be super dramatic and effective. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's, it's not, can't, you can't it's quite. Still, do... It's an attack roll. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's not, it's not an assured thing. Yeah. So I think that I am, what is my, my, this is a dex. What would this be? What are you trying to do? You're trying to attack. I'm trying attack. to just throw this, throw this into his mouth and, and set him on fire from the inside. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's an attack roll. It should be an attack roll. Yeah. Right. Um, so this is an improvised weapon. Uh, so you are going to take a, a, a minus four to hit. Fuck. Uh, if you want, like, if you just want to, if you want to just lob the lantern onto the balcony that it's sitting on and hope that that lantern explodes outwards and gets it, then that's more, it, it's, you would make an attack. No, no, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think my question is twofold then. Sorry, I'm not trying to make this too difficult on you. I make an attack roll, I miss. Does it still ignite on the balcony regardless? Not necessarily because it's not it's not it's not a bomb. You know what I mean? It's it's a yeah, lantern. No, you know what I mean? Like maybe. <laughs> I th I think I think knowing, and and then the next question would be if I instead wait another turn to stick my arm in his mouth with this thing, is it an attack roll or is it just going to burst into flames in his mouth? Um, <laughs> I think that's dependent on who wins initiative. Okay. Which has been like, really going in our favor this, like, this like far. It, if if it yeah. wins in it in a in it successfully attacks you, then you're basically like you're going to be in its maw. You know what I mean? Like you're going to be yeah. in there. And then yeah. and then you know so if you survive, <laughs> then, okay. then it would yeah. take no attack roll to to, to hurt it because you'd be in it. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I guess the question, David, is is it better to have two d six falling damage or whatever damage a lantern does to your face while you're inside of a pitcher plant? I think I think I think the speech and all of that just warrants me trying to wait one more turn and see what the initiative pans Do it, man. Out dramatic is. effect. I mean, come on. Oh, we don't we don't I, normally I am, go in I for drama taking, in this group, but I'm you not do I'm that. not doing this to miss. I'm doing this to out of spite. I hate this thing. Yeah, you're yeah. And if I survive it, all the better. And if I don't, I still burned it with me. That's okay. what I'm saying. So, so what are you it doing? Took Ahab, oh. it, took, it took Ahab years to hate that whale. Like you've hated this thing. <laughs> He's very, very quick to anger, perhaps. Okay, what do you, what do, you do, Barbara? Let's, let's, let's pick it up. What do you do? I'm, wait, I'm waiting for the, the next round. You're so. waiting. Okay. All right. So yeah. it, okay, so all it's right. going to drag you up further. Okay, roll for initiative, please. Yeah, I'm going to roll. You do it, David's got to roll. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, there you four. go. You got it. <laughs> okay. Huzzah. Okay. All right. So, uh, what this is what th th they plan to do. Uh, yeah. The the mound. Um, so this is actually a, this is actually a good thing with my little house rule of projecting things. You can see that the mound is not going to hesitate at all. Uh, as it's going to move directly from the through, fire through that fire okay. is what it's going to attempt to do. And it's going to attempt to reach whoever is in front. Um, the vine. Um, is going to lift you mm -hmm. up and drop you directly into its maw. Okay. Um, that's what they're planning to do. Now it is your turn. What do you do? What do you do? So right before I detect it's going to drop me, I'm going to smash that thing. Okay. Into its maw. Okay. 
Gotcha. The the purpose of which being I may still fall and die in its mouth, but I want to try to burn them before the worst case scenario for myself, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's your turn, so you don't have to tell me what you're doing. You just do it. That's what I do. So, okay, Vargas. So, okay, so you're dangling over. As you look into what is your imminent death, the thing yeah. opens up like a flower, like a sickly yeah, yeah, flower. Yeah. <laughs> its tendrils kind of, kind of sprouting out, but you see the inner sides of the mouth. You can see that there is some sort of yellow-brown uh, digestive sap that is basically um, like a pool within it um, that is like bellowing out like this nauseous smell um, yeah. as you are dangling over to be its next meal. Um, and you, you're you going to drop the lantern into it or slam it forcefully into that maw? Slam it forcefully into the maw. Okay, cool. Um, so I'd still need you to roll to hit, um, but it's going yeah. to be a very, very low AC, as in like a, a, like easy for you to hit. Cool. Clear. Of inspiration. Yes. Yeah, can everyone, yeah. Corin, can you clear your die? <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Thanks. I actually closed my die tray. Good. Thinking that that did it. Sorry. All right, big moment, folks. Let's go, Varga. Fuck me. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Wait, did you roll <laughs> six sided? Oh, you rolled a six sided. What? Did you roll twenty sided? Oh, I, I rolled a, a twenty sided. Oh, it's just that's just the icon for for. Oh, oh. really? Yeah. Isn't it? Oh. No. Oh. No, you oh. get to roll a twenty. Yeah, yeah, oh, he, did, he did. He did. Yeah. He just rolled bad. <laughs> he just rolled bad. He just oh. rolled bad, folks. He just rolled bad. Um, oh. Okay. So, yeah, you. Um, I'm so sad now. <laughs> so first of all, erase the lantern. Um, Lantern's gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the least of our problems. <laughs> yeah. So you you toss that thing forcefully into its maw. Um, the lantern. Uh, uh, the lantern basically. What I'm going to say is it basically bounces off one of the tendrils. Uh, you know what I mean? It doesn't. It doesn't actually go into the maw, um, and it just clank, 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 and sputters out uh, onto the ground. It actually rolls, and you hear it. It hit against something stone. You don't have quite the presence of mind at the moment to exactly determine what that might be, um, as you are being uh, quickly lowered into its maw uh, at, oh, the, at the same time. Uh, now that you guys, what do you guys do? Okay, so, so we have an issue. Wait, wait. Hold on a second, Mike. I did not come in early enough to hear what this hallway looks like. So uh, a straight hallway, dude, with a couple corridors off the yeah. either side leads back to the wizard wizard lock door. Yeah, it's very okay. So it's, straight it's, corridor. Uh, nothing. There's no like stairs up. You didn't find any. Are there windows? Really? Are there? No, just real. I'll give you the deal real quick. It's just a straight yeah. corridor that goes directly back to the to the wizard lock door. There are a few. Yep. Uh, there are a few empty storerooms, any of which you can go behind and barricade yourself if you wish. Um, there is uh -huh. also one unique room which they investigated, which was a sitting room that happened to have one of the um, the teleportation rings that Finitior right. uh, described, but you couldn't figure out how to activate it. Okay, so right. that's basically it. There's no this... there's no stairways. There's no other exits. There's no windows. There's nothing. There's just a couple of rooms that you can barricade yourselves in, or the exit out. No windows, huh? And none of the storerooms had windows, nope. and the nope. teleport room didn't have windows. Nope. I'm giving you the full deal. That's that's the deal. <laughs> I guess we run, right? I'm. I would like to run away. Okay. All so right. Everyone yeah, everyone Squeegee's gonna me. scamper his big old floppy goblin feet who, who slapping a, against the wet. Who has the slowest movement rate? And what is it? Mm, oh. Oh. It is I, and uh, my movement rate is. Uh, Oh no! I, uh, six, 20 feet, I guess. It, I'm I'm still in the forty foot range. Uh, what? Uh, oh! Oh wow! Oh, I'm at the thirty. Yeah. So, yeah. So what is it? Tell me your movement rates. It, I'm twenty because I'm because okay. I got I'm a 30. lot of weapons and I'm bristling with weaponry. I'm I'm thirty too. Okay. Um, it actually should be fine now that I think about it because um, you guys want initiative, so you guys are going to peel off as quickly as you can. Um, doing Hold that. on, I, Ted, stop me before I can say. I are there things where you can do more than one thing? Is it like do an action and move, or do you? Is it just like what are you? Because I want to basically whip when it's in the fire pit. I want to whip the other flask of oil at it and then run away. Can I do that or no? Oh yeah, you can do that, but you okay. but you're not going to be able to go as far as the rest of them. That's fine. Okay. 
Um, all right, so yeah, you'll be the first one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can do that. So go ahead and uh, roll your your oil flask there. Okay. Do -do 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 -do. So I go back to my dice tray. A seven. A seven. I mean, Ugh. it's an area of effect area. Like I'm hitting the yeah. fire, right? Or the, the thing? Well, it, if you miss, you don't hit it, but it hits the ground like somewhere nearby. We could do the whole rule thing where you know, but I'm not going to bother with that. So you, okay. you, um, you, you throw it and it misses it, but it hits nearby, it explodes in flame, catches with the other flame that's already existing in the in the room in the doorway, um, and you can see now that it's um, it's the monster's turn. Um, so the shambling mound um, it doesn't even seem to be aware that there is fire around. It just goes <laughs> and it like moves right through it. The, your bomb explodes in its face um, uh, at, at the base of its feet and um, also does not seem to have affected it at all. But instead of moving through, it basically glares at you, right, which you assume it glares at you, through the doorway. And then with, uh, uh, um, uh, with one big limb, it goes and slams the door and basically uh, shutters you in complete darkness. You are. It's just like you, get out. you are. You are basically. Oh, you yeah, got Squeegee had a torch. Yeah, yeah. So you have your torch light. Um, but it's you oh, yeah, guys. We, I you have guys, mine too. So yeah. Okay, so you booked it way back, it, but yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. But you don't see. So it threw us out. It, it threw you out. Yeah. Yeah. We just got ejected by the bouncer. Then the. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. The, the meanwhile, back in the room. Uh, <laughs> Delicious, delicious burger. Yes. Uh, he's got this. You know, he's going to be fine. Hey, uh, you know what? Lady Mark, Luck and Little Shine. I mean, I could only lose my leg and an arm. You never know. Uh, burger, that uh, sap in the bottom of the pitcher, if you can collect some of that, yeah. I bet it's smart. really good, like, as syrup on those sturge eggs, you know? Oh, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. delicacy. Yeah. The top dollar for so that. So what it's going to do is it actually sort of dips you in sort of like a fondue sort of thing. Like, it's not going to let go of you. <laughs> it's sort of like like into the sap and just gonna like uh okay it's like a chocolate fountain <laughs> oh all right here we go so now we'll know which one's worse being turned into a wraith or being <laughs> dissolved by a plant it's... <laughs> all right oh my god it's gonna deal five <laughs> Five points of uh, of damage to you, Barger. Love that. The exact amount of hit points that I have. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, my God. I thought Oak in the Hole was deadly. This is insane. Yeah, at some point, we're going to actually meet something we can fight. I don't know when. I don't know when. <laughs> Seems to me that the first level of this dungeon is a level 20 dungeon. <laughs> yeah. oh my God. Uh, okay. Holy crap. The author must have been really, like, Bored and hateful. Bored and hateful. Well, <laughs> I'm just gonna put all that shit in here. It's gonna kill everybody. Well, I, I think he designed this for his children, just for yeah. like when they misbehaved. Yeah. <laughs> I love how this right, is, kids. I love how this. You, you uh, like, now that the, the shit's hitting the fan, it's like it's all out of our control. There's nothing we could have done. <laughs> all right, give me a second. Here. Oh, oh, come on. It's been a while with the. I thought we were pretty thrifty, all things considered. Uh. Hey, we got that. We got the tapestry. Yeah, where's that from? That's from oh, the did, sitting we, room. Oh yeah, we can. Yeah, he closed the, the door room. so we can grab it. Yeah. All right. Well, Something. I like tapestries. Let's oh see. man. How long is it going to take to digest, David? I mean, I don't think we can get to it before he's dead. If he just took five hit points of damage. I have some bad news too. Yeah, that's all he had, that's right? There's a lot of stuff on my body. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember when I was like, hey, if anyone wants to like, stow stuff before we go in here, speak now for well, your ultra peace. <laughs> let's see. Maybe his backpack dissolves off and falls to the floor and we can retrieve it. I could go through this death and dismemberment thing like we did before, but um, now that I'm thinking about the circumstance, if you guys are, are, are you guys not going back? I don't, I don't know how we get past the shambling mound. Scale I'm the balcony. I'm just checking. I can't climb. get to the pitcher plant. Manage not to get eaten by the pitcher plant. Rescue David's gear. <laughs> at that point. Yeah. So uh, uh, I'm willing to try. I got nothing. I'm willing to try. Like if you guys open the door and make a bunch of noise while one of us tries to sneak in, 
you know, to distract the monster again, and whoever snuck in, it doesn't see him. You know, that's the best. That's all I got right now. Uh, stop me anytime. Uh, but the person who sneaks in then is able to try and climb up yeah, while the things. To, it that'd be me, a, probably. Yeah, it'd have to be a probably, sneak in and climb. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to think. Uh, you'll do what you want to do. So you know, the key ring is on my person, as is the cylindrical rod. Oh, my oh God. that gold. Oh. <laughs> Which Mark, Mark, it all the maybe we should do a stash. It's fine. Uh, uh, you know, so but the, you know they're safe now. We we are well protected. You know, we know exactly, exactly where they are. are <laughs> dissolving in stomach acid. So <laughs> just just so you know, if there if that keyring was necessary to like open the front door to the dungeon, we're not going. <laughs> okay, I'm going back to barrel making school. <laughs> All right, yeah. so I think I think we have to I think we have to call it. I think Varger yeah. uh, is lost, unfortunately. Oh no, shit! Yeah, uh, let's go get let's go get him. Come on, come on, guys, come on, come on. My next are, character's you're, you're an assassin. His next character's minutes, a wizard. Okay, all right, let's <laughs> wait, hold on. There's a fire at the door. We gotta wait till that goes out. It's gonna kill us. Go in. <laughs> so the shambling mound is not bothered by fire like at all. Like at no, all, he's not worried about way. it. At I've got all. nothing that can harm him at all. We right. don't know that. We never actually tried to swing at it. Very true. I mean, the thing's nine feet tall, dude. I don't think I've got anything that can hurt it. Uh, certainly not my little goblin arrows. Uh, maybe if I brought. I mean, 50 literally, brothers, though, just... we could we could open the door. One of us sneaks in, kind of thing. Tries yeah. to you know, while the rest it's... of us try to get its attention, it's going to run up and slam the door on us again, probably. Right. Yeah, but. But then, Mike, the, there's a fire in front of the door right now. Right, so we have to wait for the fire to go out, dude. Okay, okay, all right, just, just checking. And okay. this is right. just, to, just to save his stuff. So we'll so we'll call the combat over right now. Uh, so a turn goes by. Yeah. Um. I mean, you're not, John. Just so we're clear, you're not. They're not. There's no possibility for them to save me in any fashion. Uh, I'm I'm waiting to hear some sort of viable way of doing that. If if there is, I'll I'll roll on the death and dismemberment table. Gotcha. I think that's the question John's asking, really. Well, just the, by virtue of having to wait for the oil to go out, I think it's going to be at least a couple of rounds, right? Yeah. How, now, how the other the thing oil? that we could do is we could try to we could try to circle around and sneak into that, um, sneak into the uh, other doorway, the that leads the to garden. the garden. Is that yeah. any more viable? I don't know. It'll just take a while. I could be fast. Wait, we didn't. I mean, he's going to be digested. Um, it, it seems could, like the only way we could possibly save him is to get right back in there, which would be going. I, I, think that, I think that is the case. Um, realistically, there, and you would have to. The only way that I would, I would basically, I make a ruling. The only way that there is a slight chance that you could get him is if you, if you went straight through, like you would have to run back through the fire, like as as quickly as you possibly could. And and, yep. and just up like you'd have to go as like you know. Can we? And it would probably have to be Squeegee because that that's the only person who could probably quickly go up the vines. All right, Squeegee, yeah. leave your gear here so that you move faster, please. Yep. Can you smother the fire with the tapestry? Uh, or I'm would you gonna... rather keep? I'm Wait, not going to do that. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> think... that is mercenary. <laughs> no, there's got to be a better way to do that, dude. What if we just pour water on it, or what if we? Use our cloaks to beat out the fire or something. Or, or wait, uh, pour water on him, right? So he's like covered in water. So he can run right yeah, through. Okay. While I take off my bow and uh, my arrows uh, and drop my shield, uh, pour water all over me, yep. and I'm going to do it. Hell I'm gonna yeah, run for it. Get, Get there, there. Red. Fucking awesome. Squeegee. Awesome. If, if Squeegee, I'm gonna, starts... I'm gonna, Squeegee, I'm going to use your bow to try and shoot arrows at that damn thing so that... Yep. Uh, yep. Do it. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. So I, uh, I ditch my stuff. I'm going to run back to the door. I'm just going to open it up and I'm going to run in there. And I'm trying to remember where I saw the, the creature like lurking yeah. before, yeah. right? Assuming that maybe that's like its spot. Mm -hmm. And which is that kind of under where David was? Did he like go back and he's like looking up at yeah, the thing, is what I'm imagining, more right? Or less, yes. So right. now I'm trying to remember where there's vines that are not near that. And mm -hmm. I'm going to open the door and run for those and start climbing. Okay, but you know that David, you know that David's like, you know that Varger is sort of in that general area, though, right? 
Uh, maybe I didn't explain myself right. So there's vines all over. Yep. Right. And if the creature is under David over here, I want to climb over here. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. To and, then, David, and then make his way around make from your, above. Make gotcha. my way around. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Not a problem. So uh, then, now this happened quickly, right? Like, so you you would have seen D David's imminent death, right? You're not yeah. you're not actually uh, Varger's imminent death. Sorry, um, but you weren't you wouldn't quite possibly be sure. But you guys would have run out to the corridor and be like, oh, we can't leave him behind, and you immediately made the quick decision to go right back, right? Um, and yep. squeegee as you bolt through the door, that means that the Shanley Mount didn't actually have enough time to return to its original position. If that's indeed where it was <laughs> going to go, it it did, however, turn around and it's basically moving back in that direction. Okay, but right. It's it's but it's I would say it's about twenty feet away from you right now as you open the door. The fire is it's not raging. It's not a huge fucking bonfire, but it's like a you know it's like a pool of fire right there. You know. Um, yep. Uh, now you were putting it in the spot where the, to, to, in order to be you know the vector of the way that the mountain was going to be coming um, that you would you would it would hit it right. So you can actually easily escape towards the eastern side without having to go through that fire. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, does that make sense? I'm not then trying, I'm not trying to deus yeah, ex It totally does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I avoid the fire. I head for some vines. I climb as fast as I can up. I'll worry about how to get to David once I'm out of reach of the shambling mound. Okay. I will say. I've got a hand axe and a whip and my armor, but I ditched my shield and my bow. I'll give you a free turn, a, a free round to get to the base of the vines to start clearing up before we have to roll initiative. The red, uh, Everest okay. on Goran, you cannot... Uh, that was just squeegee, but uh, Gordon and Everett, so you can't like fire missile weapons this round. Uh, but right now we're gonna okay. roll, now we're gonna roll for initiative. Okay. okay. All right, I'll I'll roll this one because it's my ass on the line. I got four. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> Thanks, squeegee. We, we we really bonded two scumbags in the five minutes we yeah, spent. That's together. right. <laughs> I, I, I've known him for several minutes, and that's why I rolled a two. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so because it's going to because hear. Because I'm a very nervous goblin, I think. It hears the door open. Um, it's going to see you scuttle, um, see you scuttling towards the vines, and it's going to um, move towards you and attempt to yank you off those vines. Um, maybe, oh, uh, maybe. I, wait, Arisius. I shouldn't be telling you that. That's that's what. Yeah, you should be telling me what you plan to do. You're going to go up the well, vines. Well, I, I'm climbing, and I think the guys should be making noise and shooting arrows. Yep, okay. that's what I'm going to do. Right, Verisios, what are you doing? Uh, uh, I will be on. Uh, I don't have any uh, missiles, so I will. I will make a lot of noise. I'll try to talk to it. Maybe I can calm him down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> easy does it, fella. Maybe I got a milk bone here for you. Hey, come here. I can. I can tell you a nice story over, over here. Come on. Cool. All right. Yeah. So it's going to um, uh, on its turn. It uh, uh, shambles uh, back towards Squeegee, um, and. Uh, let's see the distance. It would not be able to get there, but it will if you don't. No, I think you're good, actually. Yeah. So it, it's not going to be able to get there in time. Then you're gonna you're going to um, shimmy up. You're on the first um, first balcony <sighs> or first level of balconies. Yeah, right? I was just wondering if I should make you roll for it, but I think with like a. I'm just a little guy, of course. I just to buy yeah, but you're not. You're not. Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty. I'm it's a very fear. I know. Yeah, I know. It's know? a very, it's a very easy <laughs> thing to climb, but I do think there's a chance of failure. So, and it is dramatic. So, uh, roll me a d6. Uh, if you roll, if if you roll a six, you fail it. <laughs> have this be your one six. Hey, I rolled a one. Okay, good. I rolled right. a one, everybody. Right. Yeah, you, quick. You, you, you shimmy up, um, Gorin. Go ahead and. Um, <laughs> Uh, attack. Hey, you a beastie! All right. 20 seconds. The dwarf's 14. famous hatred for plant life. 14, and I have a plus one to hit for missile attack, so 15. You do? Oh, because of the short range? Yeah, from my dex. Oh, for the dex. Oh, and mm -hmm. you're in short range, so you get another plus one, right? Ugh, so 16. Nice, nice. Uh, 16, okay, that is a hit. And I roll a D8. This is the first time I've actually hit anything. In oh combat. my god! Is this like the first successful attack roll? Uh, yeah, you. Yeah, think it is. Yeah, you're the big D8 guy. Oh, big eight! Hey, Ooh. John. I just remembered something that nice. might be relevant. Fuck it, Legolas. 
Yes, dude. <laughs> you said the lantern bounced against something stone nearby when mm -hmm. I failed to get it in him. Mm -hmm. Is there a fire propagating up there when they re-enter into the room? Uh, it didn't occur to me that that because we like kind of just moved on from that, but I didn't say so. But I'll roll for it if you want that to be the case. I don't know. I don't know if Ted wants that to be this. I just you just said well, it, like I, I thought the premise was that because you missed. It, it not only did you miss, but the lantern didn't break. I thought that was the premise yeah, of what yeah. John was suggesting. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, like I, my my thing was like the lantern's now gone. Like it's not useful, and it's it did gotcha. not it did not burst. Yeah. Um, Quite all right. Yeah. Okay. To make you as mad as possible. So, uh, let's see. Okay, so Goran, um, your arrow flies true uh, using Squeegee's bow, um, and it goes directly into this thing. Just goes like sinks uh, deeply into it. It rockets back like a little bit, but um, uh, um, you know what? I'm going to make a quick roll, real quick. Fifty percent chance it's going to turn towards the source of that um, new newly found pain. Um, you know what? I'll do it up in the open here. Uh, we'll roll d6. One to three is going to be Gorn. Four to six will be Squeegee. Squeegee, clear your uh, dice tray. Well, it's going right. to stick with Squeegee. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's going to stick with Squeegee. Going for Squeegee? Yep, still going for Squeegee. Um, but uh, it did seem to actually uh, be affected by that, <sighs> although it didn't seem to slow it down that much. Um, all right. It's hard being a goblin, man. That was Everybody's the end us. of their barger. Um, you're all sorts of jacked up. I need you to roll me a d12, please. Right. Is this the death and dismemberment time? Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Whenever there's a D12 involved, that's never a good time. No, thing. that's a terrible, terrible time. And we get to roll on the right. acid fire column, which <laughs> I, 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 uh, that's always good. <laughs> do this to my face. Yeah. All right. I've seen All Toxic right. Avenger. This is not going to go. Dude, yeah. He's going to uh, look like that guy that got covered in toxic waste in, uh, in Robocop. Robocop. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> 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 okay, you ready? Yeah. D12 coming down. That's a 10. A ten. Oh man, you were got to be good. You were that's one be good. one short of um going to the real bad one. So it's good. All right. Uh, uh so for right now you are horribly burned. Um, and Margaret, this is perfect for you. You don't even wear armor. The the consequences of that is you cannot wear armor, and you're like whatever. <laughs> 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 yeah. So you're basically like melting right now. Um. Uh, uh, yeah, so you're at zero, and uh, that's good, because you haven't taken a fatal wound, which means that it's actually really good for your plan here, because that means that Varger is not... Um, Incapacitated. Yeah, he's not at that point where, like, you've got to help him out, like, right now, or he's going to he's going to die. Now, of course, the thing is... Um, uh, going to keep eating him. Going to keep eating him, correct, yeah. Uh, yeah. So... Yeah, that's unfortunate. So we're gonna do that. <laughs> um, that don't, was don't so, hit your plants that digest you over a thousand years. Isn't that what that they do? that burned one was sort of a um uh, that was the retro one like when you initially got uh, put in Varger. So now with this current round, it's going to deal more damage to you, um, and okay. which will apply to your severity. And you're gonna have to roll on that again. So here we go. All right. Um, <laughs> so remember, there's no negatives. It's just about like the severity. So now you're gonna yeah, roll a d12 again, and you're going to add one, which is really good. I only rolled a one. All right, everyone ready? Ready. Back to nine plus one. That puts me at a ten. Oh, a ten again. Oh. All right. Uh, oh. No, it's good. It's good. It means he's still burned. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's some new version of the word good I never heard before. <laughs> well, that I'm, sounds well, awesome. Yeah, no. <laughs> Let's have another one of those. He still hasn't gotten into burn territory, but what it is is this is adding up the number of days that should he survive that he will be uh, this horribly mangled. Right now we're at 19 days. <laughs> we don't have money for you for 19 days, bro. <laughs> You're going right. to be sleeping in the There's, there's a tower with a campfire. You can kind of bury me in the dirt. I was All right, we're, say, we're, man. We're, we're still in it. Roll for initiative, please. Who's got All it? Right. Go, oh, go I got a two. I got a two. I got a two. Go have a risk. Yeah, I'll do it. I haven't done one yet. <clears throat> okay. Oh, two. Tied. All right. PCs win in that case. Uh oh, uh, uh to two as well. Okay, yeah, it's a re it's a reroll. Okay. I, still got, a, I oh. still got a two. Yeah, I don't do simultaneous. It's just pain in my ass. Uh six. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Six? I don't see it. Your audio, your audio just dipped. I don't. I can't hear him. I don't yeah, he said why. six. I don't see six. it coming up on the screen though. I don't see it either. Uh, are you? Are you not sharing, Everusius? 
Uh, no, it's fine. I believe you. Okay. Um, no, fine. All right. So uh, what they plan to do is um, the vine will continue to do fondue style on Varger. And <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and uh, the Shanley Mound is going to. Uh, it's going to do the same thing they did to Varger initially. It's going to swing at the balcony that you're at right now, Squeegee. Um, right. Uh, but if you manage to get off that balcony, it won't be a problem. And you did win initiative, so that shouldn't be too difficult for you. But that's what it's going to take. All right. For. What are you guys doing? All right. So what I want to do is... So I, you know, I'm on the first level sort of balcony here. And I don't know if this balcony has a bridge immediately accessible that goes up. Uh, or if there are more... Vi- it does. It does. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Are, or are there vines immediately nearby? Could keep climbing. Uh, the, the yes, there's always vines, um, but the the, yep. the bridge is actually a much faster route. So okay, I'll book it up the bridge, uh, presuming that that actually is taking me closer to David, uh, mm-hmm. or a way to get at David. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, if it is not, if it's like taking me away from it, David, it's taking you towards David. He already said it's going towards, towards David. David. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Fine. Then I will. I will uh, run, and uh, I'm gonna. Um, take my whip off my belt. Okay, just take it off as I run. Yeah, right Indiana on. Goblin. Oh snap! Indiana oh, Goblin. This That's is what I'm hoping for. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be great. Okay, Gordon and Avaricious. I'm going to shoot it again. I, I'm going yeah. to just keep making noise to try to get hey, it to come hey. over. The way. Okay, cool. Gordon, uh, I can I can roll. Uh, Yes, it's your turn. So yeah, okay. Am I right? Yeah, you guys won. I rolled a one. <laughs> All right. Not gonna do it. Um, Avaricious oh. is yelling though. However, um, I'm going to. I'm gonna say it's pretty intent on Squeegee, so I'm gonna give it a um, uh, six sider. Uh, one to four, it stays with Squeegee. Otherwise, it turns towards you guys. I'm inviting him to drink. Come on, let's just call this whole thing off. We can Ooh. go have drinks and talk about it. He's crazy. totally down for it, Everest. He also, as he turns back towards you. Oh, he yes. wants a piece of that, actually. I was really kind of hoping that would not work. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> That's too much. Jump in the river. Jump in the river. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, the Shanley Mountain is going to turn back towards uh, Gorin and Avaricios um, at the end of its round, and and the plant is going to dip it's delicious thing. Uh, I need you to roll me a d12 and add three to it, please. Uh, Ooh. How many rounds until Ted gets All right, here we go. That's a 10 plus three. Oh, oh okay. 13. Probably get hurt. All right, you're going to get Not rolling four. great tonight. Okay, so now, now it gets interesting, great. especially for Squeegee. Okay. <laughs> now it gets interesting. <laughs> you have... Uh, oh, so, uh, I was so bored before. I need you to... Okay, this could be... Okay, so first of all, you might be blinded. Um, oh. oh. Yeah. So let me actually see the character sheet here. Give me a second. I mean, at that point, is he okay, mm-hmm. is he playable? I don't know. What's the deal with that? I'll make it work. <laughs> I'll ride him around like Master Blaster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need you to make me a save, a save versus petrification polymorph, David. Oh, what's your number? That sounds bad. I mean, uh, save for petrification is a thirteen. Paralysis petrification thirteen. Okay, you have thirteen. I'm rolling now. That's a one. Brutal, brutal. I gotta say, love that the dice despise me tonight because it's definitely <laughs> making it interesting but i don't think i've rolled a single good thing in the that entire is, that, session that is uh-uh. brutal. okay so did you did your eyes just like melt out of your head basically? i think so i think so uh yeah so you are you are blinded you no one has any way of knowing that um but you're also going to take a fatal wound so this is where it's going to get um pretty nasty so you have um you have three rounds to get rid of all your fatal wounds or you die um you can only attempt to remove a fatal wound at the end of each round by rolling a one on a d6. And an adjacent ally can attempt to remove the fatal wound by um, by using their action to roll under half their intelligence score. We have done this in the past a couple times. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a pretty cool rule. Um, I, I got some bad news for you, David. My int score is seven. <laughs> <laughs> Not the medic. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, you know, you know what? Just push me, push me off the side, and someone else will, will, will give it a try. That means Varga, you actually have a better chance of actually like removing the fatal wound on your own just through luck. Yeah, you like do. A, it's like a seventeen percent chance. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be like, what is this a spleen? I don't know. I'm, just I'm sure it goes here. <laughs> okay. Maybe if I spit in it. Okay. Where? Yeah. Are we? That was the end of the round, right? Yeah. Uh, the attack. Uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Well. Yes. Yeah, the sh yeah, we did our stuff. Yeah. Okay. Roll. Oh. oh, I got a one. I did it last time. All right, I got it. I got it. Oh, oh go, ahead, Ted. go ahead, Ted. Okay. Uh Ted is rolling initiative and Ted also rolls a one. So you want to re-roll, John? Is that right? <laughs> did you really roll one? <laughs> That's brutal. Yeah. yeah. What is going on? Uh, <laughs> I really did. Oh, no. is, I so, never there you go. Felt uh, more certain that all uh, all of the deities of the computer have wanted Varger to be a mush clump. <laughs> Seriously, we're doing our best. Yeah, we're doing our best. Sure. Okay, so sure uh, just him. I won. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you did. What do we? What do we? What are you guys planning on doing? Sque Squeegee's running up to to uh, Varger, right? How close yeah, is it I'm to us now? To get to... Um, it oh. is. Uh, it, mm. it's. I'd say it's about like thirty feet ish. It's turned. It's turned it towards. The, it will close the distance with us this round. It will close an attack if you if um uh, if yeah. you're still there. Mm -hmm. I am going to move down the hall and shoot at it. I'm oh, okay. Going to I'm going to run away towards the bar. Okay, got it. Cool. Um, to the bar. To the bar. Uh, yeah, it's that way. The I'm going yeah, to... the... <laughs> wherever the nearest bar is, that's where I'm, I'm going. I'm probably not going to make it on this turn, but that's where I'm, I'm headed. <laughs> I'm All right. out. All right. Uh, oh, uh, Varger, you needed to on the previous round um, make uh, roll your your death save basically. So roll a d six. One. Luigi, clear your dice tray. You got a one. Yeah. Oh, that's you what you it. needed. That's what you did it. You, you cleared the wound. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, if he'd known he needed a one, it would have been a six. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be honest. Oh, yeah. first good roll of the night, baby. I'm just blind and burned you, you, into you're it. Just blind. <laughs> okay, so at the top of the round, um, the the monster's one, so the vine is going to dip. Um, you're gonna take three. Oh, no. So roll a d12 plus three. Hmm. <laughs> It was almost a one. It's a five, so it's an eight. An eight. That's okay. okay. All right. So you're gonna to, you're gonna be horribly burned. It's a whole new 20, yeah. 27 days now. <laughs> Horrible burns. Um, okay. And the the mound is going to um, uh, it won initiative, right? So it actually is able to close. Um, so Gorn or oh. oops. Yep, Gorn or Avaricious. <laughs> <laughs> one, to, one, to, one to two is Gorn, three to four is Avaricious. Uh, uh, Avaricious. Oh boy. How many points you got, Avaricious? <laughs> not many. <laughs> not, not enough. Okay. Boy, second level would have been useful, huh? <laughs> it really would have. <laughs> uh, does okay. it hit me? Yep. I would, can I, uh, wait, can I have it uh, shatter my shield? I hold up my shield so it shatters. Oh, all right, nice. Wait, but did it even <laughs> hit you? John rolled a nine. No, I rolled a sixteen the first time. Oh, which is a twenty-three, which hits. Oh yeah. Um. I yeah, that would hit. Yeah, and so you can have my shield. So it comes crashing down. Your sh you put your shield up last minute. Boom, blows it. Blows it apart. As then the other uh, arm comes crashing down on you, hitting AC sixteen. Uh, yes. Because without that shield with okay, left on the first one, uh, I have an armor class of 11. 11, okay. Wait, I oh, okay. Well, I thought the first roll was the 16, and the second roll was a 9. 16 plus 7 is 23, 9 plus 7 is 16. It's that plus that gets you. Yeah. Plus yeah. seven. Think um, about that. Yes, a yes. plus seven. Put that, in your, put that back in your brain for a second. If you're going to take oh. nine nine points of damage, Avaricios. Uh, uh, no, I won't. I'll just take three and then collapse. <laughs> and then collapse. All right, so that's going to put you... <laughs> if you had three, so it's going to put you six. Roll me a d12 plus six, please. Oh, boy. Holy uh, crap. Uh, here we go. 
Oh, that's a one. That's probably good. A one plus yeah. six is going to be a yeah. seven. Um, roll me a d6. Uh-oh. Uh, that's a four. Four. Okay, it's going to be the torso. What did I say? That's going to be six, I said, right? All right. Uh, yeah, you get uh, smashed into the ground. Uh, <gasps> you immediately lose consciousness, and you're going to take... Uh, what did we say the severity was? You rolled a... What did you roll? A one? Uh, my d12 was a one, and my d6 was a four. One, and then... Yeah, right. But then you took... Um, you three, three plus... Three. Six points with three left over. Right, six points with three left over. Right, so it's going to be um seven. So you're going to take, yeah, seven. Yeah. Okay, you're going to take uh, blood loss. So um, you're going to, your maximum hit points is reduced by one for every hit die you possess. It's actually good. You're not second level uh, because you're only going to take oh. one. So uh, you're going to have that for seven days. Um, Ouch. As you were knocked unconscious right at Gorn's feet. All right. Uh, <laughs> it is your guy's turn. Well, I haven't gone yet. So. Yep, it's your guy's oh, turn now. Right, yeah. okay. um, well, he's down. So can I 86 my idea of retreating down the hallway and shooting at it mm -hmm. and just grab him and run down the hall? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. You can, and that's easy to do because you can, you know, it, you can't run fast, but you can, you're right there at the doorway. So you can just pull him back. Right. Okay. So I will do that. All right. You yank I'll Avericio. I'll move as quick, far down the hall as I can. All right. Pull as hard as you can, yanking the body of Avericio's back. Squeegee in the meantime. All right, so um, I'm not visually necessarily certain where I am in this space. Like you're basically am I like, able to. You're, Go you're, ahead. you're basically on the uh, the other side of the dome, right? Like you're basically 35 right. feet away from Park. Okay, is there a another bridge or ramp or way that would get me to Varger quickly? Uh, no, because nothing um, nothing spans the, the the length of the dome. It would okay. Yeah. So if I were to climb up to another balcony, mm -hmm. would I get to something that would get me to David? Or are, am I like, basically, if I'm heading towards David, am I two rounds away, three rounds away? You're about two rounds away, I'd say. Okay, I will continue to climb and walk across bridges as necessary to get to David. Gotcha. If, um, if they're like, if, if climbing is faster, I climb. If going bridge to bridge to bridge is faster, I go that. Yeah, basically. It's basically bridges. It's going to get you there in two rounds. Um, okay. Okay, so. Uh, all right. At this point, I'm just going to do a house, kind of a quick house rule sort of thing to kind of get things, um, you know, because there's only so much of a beating that Varga's going to be able to take before he's just completely gone. Um, and yep. uh, Mike, uh, uh, Gorin has basically taken Avaricios and himself out of combat. Um, and the, the, right. the mound is basically going to, it can't get to you, Squeegee. So it slams the door once again. Um, Gorin and Avaricios, you're you're right outside the, the, the chamber right now. Okay, just so you're aware. But if you want to do anything else, just let me know. Um, but for now, we're just going to go back to narrative sort of stuff. Squeegee. Um, you are racing as fast as you can, like, uh, through these vines and vegetation and stuff like that to get around the dome and up to Varger. Um, in the right. span of, the, in, in the span of that two rounds, Gorn and Avaricios, do you want to do something? Avaricios will definitely get its death saves for one thing. I would like to live. That's what I would like to yeah. Gorn, do you want to do anything specifically different I than just... I want to try and do... Can I help him? Like, my whiz, my intelligence is not high. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. Um, and there's no, try and there's no like penalty for like feet. screwing up, so it's it's fine. All right, yeah, so, I want to try and get him back on his feet. Okay, so let's quickly do. Um... Oh wait, he's not. Um... He doesn't. Have he has this. no fatal wounds. He, does, he doesn't have fatal wounds. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe for a second. Just okay. drag him to safety. So, there is no like. There is no getting him conscious. There's right? not unless you have magical healing. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I'm sorry. So give him some brandy. What would you like to do? Boy? All right. I'm going to take him, I'm going to drag him down the hallway so he's not right outside the door. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to the doorway once, probably on the following round. Okay, got it. Yep, that, that works out perfectly. All right. Okay. Squeegee, uh, in those two rounds, you are finally able to get over there. Now, the, the tendrils are, like, pulsating as if they're sort of, like, drinking a little bit. It's, like, really kind of disturbing. Um, but they right. almost seem like a little bit lulled a little bit as they're distracted by the meal Lethargic. that they're eating. Yes, exactly. They have a little right. bit of food coma right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, as I'm 
as I'm running up and I get closer, like I'm now in tendril reach, I want to slow down yeah. and watch them. Mm-hmm. Um, my idea is, <clears throat> I got two ideas. If I observe that they are lethargic and possibly um, not going to be attacking me because they're busy eating Varger, uh, I'm wondering, like, can I see uh, where the pitcher plant comes down? Is there like a stem that I could cut? No, unfortunately. Otherwise, my... go go ahead. Yeah, there is. There's not. It's like bulbously kind of sitting on the ground, sitting on the balcony. Okay. So my idea then is I want to try and whip around uh, Varger's ankle or something unburnt and pull him towards me. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's see. I had it open a second ago. Here we go. The whip description. Um, I, it says on an, a successful attack, I can either inflict damage or entangle the target. So mm-hmm. my idea is to try and whoosh, entangle <laughs> Varger and <laughs> pull him back. Okay. Thus, staying out of the reach of the tendrils. Gotcha. You're going okay. to end up with just a leg. <laughs> yeah, I might. Uh, I might. Uh, if that happens, I'll try whipping his backpack and pulling that towards me. <laughs> the backpack first. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, so, okay. uh, yeah, yeah I, I intend to do that. Okay, I got it. Love it. All right. So, okay. Um, uh, go for it. It's, it, 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 is, it is thoroughly involved in eating Varger right now. Okay. So I'll uh, I'll uh, limber up the old whip and I'll sneak up, and then let her rip. Right on. And uh, uh, I don't think I have any modifiers for this whatsoever. So we're just gonna roll a. Oh god damn! On my little graphic here, it was like almost a twenty, but now it's an eight. An eight is not gonna do it, unfortunately. Eight is not gonna do it. So there's a cracking whip sound and nothing happens. <laughs> All right, the. Uh... Uh, yeah, the tendrils start to get like a little bit agitated. Um, roll for initiative, real quick. Okay. Do, do, do. Uh, oh. Any guesses? Oh, rough. People uh, watching? What, what Who thinks it's a one? <laughs> what, what, what do you plan to do, Squeezie? <laughs> Put something in the comments. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to reel my uh, whip back in and uh, I'm going to try again. Uh, okay. It's going to. But go hopefully, again. I'm standing, I'm standing far enough away from the tendrils that it can't get me. But maybe not. I don't know. All right. All right. So I gave I gave David a free round there, but uh, I can't be that nice again. So, uh, what am I rolling? I'm not. I'm just a little goblin. I mean, come on. Uh. Oh yeah. So it did five. So roll me a roll me a d12, David. That's a three. Three plus five is Ooh. eight. Ooh. Another eight days of burn. You're not a fatal wound, though. Oh. Not a fatal wound. You're just, it's, thank God you're unconscious. Let's just put it that way. It's fucking <laughs> Wait nasty. till he wakes up. Yeah, um, man. Your skin's going to come off while I'm trying to drag you through all this. You're going to call me Barbara the Lich, you know? <laughs> Ugh. Uh, maybe they'll give you a okay. job at the end washing dishes. It dunks you. The, uh, another tendril. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a, um, AC 12, Squeegee? Yeah. That is, that's uh, going to be a miss on me. Ooh. Okay. All right. So one, like, whips out at you in return for you whipping at it, uh, but you dodge yeah. completely out of the way. It's the bottom of the right round. On. Bottom of the round, Squeegee. Okay. One more whip attack, and then I might have to think of another plan. Uh, looks like it's a nine, I'm afraid. What, what actually uh, AC am I shooting for here? Uh, it's not actually that hard. Uh, you're looking for an 11. <laughs> not <bad>. um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just you level like one. crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Roll, for, roll for initiative. I know we're going a little bit late here, guys. Uh, just stay with me if you it's I'm okay. Good. All, right. okay. All right, I hit a four this time. Okay, you got it. I got a three. Uh, so uh, it, right. it's going John, to... John, I, I might be back in the action this round, so you know. Okay, cool. Uh, so what the, you yeah. guys won, so what it plans to do is it's going to um, uh, continue to dip to Varger, and it's going to lash out again at Squeegee. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to um, give it one more whip shot. Okay, go for it. I have the initiative. You want initiative? Go Did for Gordon? it. Did Gordon yeah. shoot at the pitcher plant from where he That's what, oh. I, was just, that's what I was just about Eight. to suggest. You can, you can do it. I got 18. Okay, nice. cool. All right. So uh, 
you have wrapped it around. You wanted to be Varger's leg, right? Yeah. Any part of his leg that anything that's not like, I'm assuming he's being dipped head first. I don't want to really whip it around a part of him that's burnt. <laughs> right, right. Okay. I'm, I'm a nice I think guy. You're out of luck, man. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I know. you you wrench him, um, and so basically it's like tendril versus tendril sort of thing, right? So you basically you rip him out of the maw of the thing. His his um, head is like unrecognizable as it's like dripping off this brown guck, um, and uh, but you're able to pull him out and over. So now he's sort of dangling over the ground, like you know, out in midair, right? Um, oh boy, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and it's okay, like, it's, it's trying, it's like a tug of war now, right? Like you, 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 uh, did you, did you want it? I'll, I'll let you decide. Did you want it to be on another leg or did you want it to be the same leg that the tendrils on? <laughs> Do you want to like pull them apart? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, <laughs> now that you put it that way. No, I, I, I don't actually want to split Varger in half. I, I, I want to pull him towards me. So once I've got him, I'm just going to start backing up as hard as I can. Okay. Which would be a great time for Gorin to shoot the pitcher pot. Okay. That's what I was going about to do. Gorin, okay, cool. I'm going to open the door basically a crack, John, and peep my head through and see where uh uh Mr. Green stuff is. Okay, so uh the 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 shambling... he had he had a whole round to move away from the door because he slammed the door. Yeah, he had a couple I rounds actually. Away. So he's all the yeah. way back now um uh directly underneath Varger, basically, like on, on the western side, past the flames, and the flames are dying down right now. So if mm -hmm. you, um, yeah, if they don't provide any of, 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 you know, there's no obscuring your shot to the to the plant. Okay, and I'm gonna open the door just wide enough to stick that bow through, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna try and take a shot at the pitcher plant. Okay, awesome. This is medium range, so it's normal. So no plus one to hit. Okay, no, not for sure, right? But you get your plus for dexterity. Uh, I got an eleven. Uh, an eleven is not going to do it, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that that flies wide. Um, Does the uh, shambling mound notice me though? Uh, yes, it is. But um, it can't, it can't act this round. So you guys want initiative, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the assassin vine. Oops, I just gave it away. Sorry. <gasps> mm -hmm. Uh, is going to attempt to pull Varger back, of course. Yeah. Too bad I'm just a little goblin. It's like Yoda and R2 fighting over the uh, food stick in the swamp. Yeah, mine, well... Mine. This is kind of a... R2 is going to win, man. This is kind of a tough one, so we'll kind of do like an improvised... Imp uh, 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 what do you call it? A pose roll? So... Um, okay. Just roll me a d20, Ted. You're not. This is not your action. This is just sort of you trying to, not not let, you know. Sorry, Varger. I rolled a five. A five. Okay. All right. So it yeah. it it pulls it pulls Varger back, um, but is not able to get you into the maw. But the that does not mean that the whip is gone, Squeegee. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, that was the end of the round. the The mound uh, basically is going to turn around and face Gorin again. Uh, but that's it. Roll for initiative. I got a two. I'll roll. Go ahead. Clear your dice. I got, a, I, got, I got a four. Sorry. Four. Okay, I don't know how to clear guys. just the 20. Yeah. All right. So here's what I want to do, John. Except that you have to tell me first, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, okay. Pretty. Odd. The mound's going to come straight for Gorn. It will not be able to get to you this round, Mike. Um, okay. Uh, the vine is going to d definitely dip Varger again. And go and attack Sweden okay. with the tendril. Okay. Um, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm on a bridge. Does the bridge have railings of some kind? No, unfortunately not. Like a very low parapet, you... but, but but the gr the bottom of it is like a grill. You said maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, since we're doing Indiana Goblin here, like, could I stick the butt of the uh, whip into the grill in such a way that it kind of wedges in? Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to try and um, move up with my hand axe and cut the vine on Varger's leg. Or his leg, for that matter. You know, whatever the part of the vine is holding. <laughs> just cut up his foot at this point. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, mean, if, I mean, if it doesn't look like I can do that, I'll you, just keep pulling. You, you can't do everything the same round. You could, you, could, yeah. you, could, you could wedge the whip and run up, and that would be your round. 
but you can't you can't right. wedge run and cut i wonder if you could run up and grab that lantern that's lying there and see if you could light this bad boy on fire too probably gone out um and i don't have the torch anymore i ditched that uh okay oh, what i will I do it, yeah, oh <laughs> uh okay i will you said there was a low railing is it like could i use it as leverage to help me pull like brace a foot and yes you could pull back mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay i'll do that i'll do that okay stick okay. my foot into the into the parapet uh you know, one of the pilasters, and just really lean back into it, and okay. hope that that will okay, break go. the break uh, the vine. I'll give you a plus one. And John, I'm gonna basically, I'm gonna take another shot at the pitcher plant, and then book it down the hallway. Uh, okay. All right. So I rolled a 15 plus one is a 16. That is a hit. Wait, that is that a hit or it's a pull? A pull. I'm sorry. A, yeah. a pose roll. A, a success, I should say. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, I have to do that. You have to roll too, right? Oh, brutal. Absolutely brutal. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Under the circumstances, I think I should have taken Varger's other leg because right then he would have split, I think. It's... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you're, not able oh, to, Lordy. you're not able to gain any headway. Um, Goran, you can go ahead if, and fire. Hey, John, if, uh, if my shot hits, will I have to roll again or make a save to hold on to him or something like that? Uh, <clears throat> you're trying to hit the body? Yeah, the, the pitcher. Uh, no, the body, uh, will not cause it to happen. Um, but if you, if you try to hit the exact tendril, which is a higher AC, then yes. I think I'm just going to try and hit the plant, guys. I don't, I don't trust my, my bowman shit that well. Oh, screw you! It was like right out of 20, <laughs> man! That's what I said. <laughs> brutal. It's brutal. It's brutal. All right, and then I run away again, John. Okay, that you guys want initiative, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, Vine, uh, you're running away, right? Okay, so the mound is pounding towards you, but you dip back out. Um, Ugh. Meanwhile, I need David I'm to roll. Sorry, me. Ted. Yeah, David. David, roll me a twelve cider. All right, that's two. A two. Okay. Four. At this point, Ted, just get his backpack. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I appreciate your valiant efforts. It was it was it was an incredibly brave and heroic thing. All right, everyone's still good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep keep going, keep going. I'm, I'm having a lovely dream. Okay. <laughs> All right, trying to move quick. Uh, roll for initiative. I got a one. I'll do it, Ted. Okay. Four. Okay. Sweet. Cool. Uh, I'll give it another little tug, John. <laughs> uh, the mound uh, is once again uh, going to attempt to retreat uh, back uh, now that Gorn isn't there. Um, and the vine is going to continue dunking and uh, attempt to attack Squeegee. I thoroughly look like a chicken McNugget at this point. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. What are you guys doing? I'm right, going I'm gonna to keep. Go, go ahead. Well, I'm going to keep pulling. Okay. I'm going to creep back up to the doorway and take another shot at the pitcher plant. <laughs> okay. All right. Don't all you right. want to give the mound a little more time to move away? I'm going to try and stay in the shadows so it can't see me. Like, I'll, I'll just kind of creep along the wall, like out of its line of sight, and see if I can mm -hmm. get a shot off, and maybe it won't notice me standing right there in the doorway. Okay. Who, who wants to go first? I'll, I'll just do mine because uh, so it's still an opposed roll, right, John? Oh uh, yeah, because you 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 already attacked and hit uh, Barger, so yeah. All right, uh, you, so you... braced. I have a okay. We'll I say... have a fourteen. If I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. Okay, fourteen. Okay, you you pull him out. All right. Hey. So I'll just drag him towards me without getting in range of the tendrils myself. Okay, got it. So I'm back, backing away. And okay, once again, Varger is oh. drip, dripping goo all over the floor into the basin as he's dragged out over beneath the pan uh, the dome as the sun mounts in the sky um, <laughs> uh, in the pouring rain. Uh, Gorand is going to slip back in again. Uh, indeed, the Shamley Mound um, is going to be pretty close to you. Uh, it's not all the way back, so... 
Oh. Well, then I'm going to stay hidden. And is it looking in my direction or no? It's No, it's actually, re- its back is to you because it's, it was going to return to its position. Right. But you're saying that basically if I lose, an, if we lose initiative next round, it's going to be able to run up and hit me in the mm-hmm. face twice. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to shoot. I'm going to let it move farther away. Okay, but you're going to stay in the room. I'm not in the room. I'm in the hallway looking up at the thing. Right? Oh, okay, you're still going to... Okay. But, but through the door. But, gotcha. Right? right, but I'm just going to let it... I'm not going to give away my presence that I'm there. I'm going to let it move farther away Gotcha. next turn, right. and then I'll shoot at, shoot gotcha. at it. All right, so that okay. was your turn. Uh, the vine is going to attempt to yank back. Oh, I got a one. Good for you. Ted? You want me to roll? Yeah, just don't roll a one. I rolled an eight. Okay, good. All right. You're able to, it is, you were able to pull it using your foot against the railing, just pulling as hard as you possibly can and keeping Varger swinging uh, over the edge there. And so I haven't actually broken the vine or actually pulled him away. Uh, you, no, you have not. You're, you're, you're pulling. It's like a tug of war, right? So you've got, you've, he has not gone back. You, you, you know. He's now back. Had two successes two successes. in a row. Huh? Right. I've had two successes in a row. What at what point do I free him or pull him? It's, it's not farther a, than it, You're just opposing what it's. His, it's his action. You know what I mean? So right. So right. I get that, and yeah. he lost on this one, uh, and you, you immediately get, preview. I know it, it has to be your proactive action for you to actually break it. You know what I mean? You have to break it on your turn. Ted. You have to break it on your turn, exactly. Yeah. So, so which I succeeded on my turn in this initiative. It, so that no, no, wasn't he, the break. No, he no, he was he was in the plant. Then you succeeded and you pulled him out over. Then it's the plant's turn, and the plant attempted to bring him back to the maw and was not able to do so. I've, and then now I your follow turn, you now. Yeah. So now he's dangling over, and if you can do I it get on it. your turn, I get you it. Succeed, you can break it. Got it. Okay, like, okay, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that makes sense. The mound. Um. Yeah, you didn't make any attempt to be quiet, Goran. Right. So it's gonna. Oh, I said I was creeping up to the door, and I was staying in the shadows. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. So it continues to move backwards towards its starting position, sort of thing. Okay. Cool. Roll for initiative. Sorry, it's getting late. Right, <laughs> My mind is sort of. Yep. You're good. Do we it. need to call this? Do we need to call it? Not in the middle of combat. Five. Not in the middle of combat. No, no, this is good. I rolled a five. Uh, so did I, unfortunately. Bitch. Oh. I All five. right, roll it again. Yep. Fuck. Son of a bitch. One. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Okay, Squeeze, you're going to attempt to break him free, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm still pulling. Goran, you're going to attempt to fire? Uh, if he's far enough away this turn, yes, I will attempt to fire. He will be, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, so the at this point, the mound goes back to its starting position. Okay. The okay. plant um, is is going to uh, try to yank back. Okay, so John, just to be clear, the plant's yanking back. If it succeeds, it's back in the pitcher pot. Mm-hmm. If it fails, he's still dangling. Yeah, and then all you have and to do... And then is- on my action, I can... If, if I succeed, I free him. Correct. Yep. Okay. Exactly. I'm with you. I'm yep. with you. All right. Big money, no whammies. I got a six. Oh, <laughs> oh my oh, God. Oh, Unbelievable. It's just not, it was a one, folks. Oh, a one. I rolled one. Unbelievable. This is where you need oh. hero points and stuff like that. Ugh, that's horrible. I, I would just like to know, Varger, what you did to piss off the gods, man. This is I truly. I don't know if I've been in a game session this miserably. Uh, <laughs> like, again, like in terms of the it's, roles, it's, obviously, I'm having, I'm having the time of my life watching this. This is this is awesome. It's incredible. We might statistically, we might, statistically, this is torture. <laughs> it's absolutely awful. It makes me. It seriously does make me question Albert's uh, algorithm. Uh, yeah, right. We, we, might, we might have to find some. It's other a lot of ones. ones. More, more a online. Lot most ones, online guy rules are, are not great. All right. Oof. Um. All right. I get to shoot. You get to shoot. Yes. Yeah. Maybe just shoot Varger so we're done. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Man. It, 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 it bounced children. off the nineteen again. I was like, son of a bitch. Oh, oh man. man. All right. Three. Great. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Don't go that impacted on the surface. Shocker. Maybe maybe the, the uh, thing didn't notice me and 
he won't chase me down the hall again. <laughs> I don't think our team's capable of rolling better than a six on a d20 or a d20. <laughs> I, I actually did that one time. It's absolutely what? what? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty okay. good. Uh, I've, I've had a couple of successful rolls with this whip, but boy, I tell you. Roll for initiative. I got a four. Oh, oh Jesus. I got it. Okay, it's my turn. Doop -doop -doop -doop. Well, um. Bastard. Six. That. Oh, I'm sorry. Good. Before we go, uh, that opposed check that I just did versus the plant was on the plant's initiative, not on mine. Oh, that's right. You never actually got to do a. I haven't a actually done control. mine. Yeah. yeah. You never did what? The opposed roll we just did was against the plant, oh, yeah, yeah, not the it. plant yeah, against yeah, me. So right. I have, I continue to pull on our initiative. Okay, and I roll a natural twenty. Woohoo! Oh. Nice. All right. So yeah, you pull them. Which, in the interest of time, maybe that's a critical success. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could bend the rules a little at this time of night. I, <laughs> oh, I know, but it's a, the whole old school thing is like, I gotta, uh, okay, I, I gotta right. be impartial, right? I mean, okay, okay. You know I'm All on right. your side. Like, All I right. really want you to succeed. I, I, do. It. I know it. <laughs> um, but, it's a success. But it's I an automatic anyway. success. So we'll say that I don't have to make the opposed role like you, you, you uh, yank it back out again. Okay. So if you did, it would also be a net 20. I just know. Four hour yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so true. So you know. The East Coast people are looking at uh, O Dark Thirty right now, and uh, yeah. Yeah. us Mountain Time folks are like ten thirty. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Matt, thank you for hanging in there. I know, I know you're tired, and I know it's a pain that you. That oh, no, it's it's appropriate. It's yeah. very good for the role play because I'm sleepy. He's sleepy. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I am too. Believe me. Well, right. well, we just got to get so, through. So, John, then I want initiative. Right. Uh, yeah, you want initiative. Um, so uh, the mound okay. is going to, um. Well, the mound's basically going to stay where it's at, because, Gorn, you haven't... Well, no. Uh, I shot at it. it. It shot, yeah, so it is going to come back at you again. It will not be able to reach you this round, the same as before. Mine is obviously going to do what it's always been doing. What do you guys decide to do? All right. Can I shoot gonna... at it and run down the hallway still and be out of its range? Yes. Or will I, I shoot at it, and then it'll catch me, and it'll pile me into the No, because you guys want initiative. Okay, cool. So that's what I'm going to do then. Okay. I'm, I'm going to uh, pray loudly to all the gods and make a superhuman surge of strength. Sorry, super goblin huge yes. surge of strength. Uh, each of my little goblin toes gripping tightly against the pilasters. Yeah. And yes, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm praying as... for you, Ted. I'm praying for you. <laughs> you want to do Goran never, first? Never. Can, we make it, can we make it dramatic? Yeah, yeah, dramatic. Good. Do Goran first. Yeah, if you wait for, for the arrow your... hits, maybe that will hurt the pitcher plant's chances a little bit. Goran, you could go for the yeah. you could go for the tendril if you want. Go for I the... mean, at this point, my chances of hitting anything are like. Well, I'll tell. I can, I'll, I'll just it. tell you the AC. Uh, it is what was it? Twelve for the main plant. Uh, Sixteen for the tendril. You got a decent big, big whammy, yeah. all right? All right, I need a fifteen to hit, and I'll Oof. roll. Go big or go home. Hey, I got a three, everybody. <laughs> All right. Rounded up to a four. <laughs> I got a three last round. Come on, cock dice. Cock dice. All right. Okay. Uh, Avaricios, thank you for being so brave. Uh, uh, and I'm sorry that you're unconscious. <laughs> All right, here comes here you know, comes. I can't, the even take this, I can't even take this twenty sided outside and hit it with a rock. It's really <laughs> Yeah, I think I would burn my entire dice back. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to attempt to do something else for dice rolling next time. We'll see what happens. Okay, squeaky. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll. Here we go. Here we go. No, it's a one. No, no. <laughs> what the hell? I'm calling it. I'm calling this it. Is I'm calling it. Statistically it's insane. <laughs> At least let him get the gear, dude. At least let him get the backpack. Yeah, yeah, we'll 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 call it that. I, I gotta I gotta step in, folks. I can't. Uh, we can't let the horror go on anymore. We we got it. We we have to say goodbye to Varger. It's just not going to happen, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I'm really I, sorry. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, we will we will say uh, that Squeegee does manage in the very end to be able to nab that backpack, um, and yank it off of him, um, and uh, it, you know, you're able to like hold uh, on to the whip as it like you know, and then roll it back up and grab it, but uh, Vart, you have to watch in agony as you see Varger get slowly shoved down into that maw and disappear. Well, uh, uh, you know what? Anyway, didn't he have a fatal wound? Oh, he rolled a save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gods, man. That was 
brutal. That was absolutely brutal. You did really? everything you possibly could to make that work, yeah. which was like mad props for going back there for him. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys. That was that was pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, sorry, David. I tried, man. No, don't apologize. I feel bad. That was that was really awesome on your part, both you and Matt and Mike's. I think everyone did like a really cool yeah problem solving for trying to make it work. So I appreciate it. Ah, it's a real bummer because uh, we, we lost we lost Varger too, but. So it, so it goes. Hey, we don't need a wizard or a thief in this mega dungeon. Don't worry about it, <laughs> well, bro. Don't worry. The about good thing it. is, life is so cheap. You could seriously just be like, "Well, I just make another thief." <laughs> you know what, I mean? what is your next character, though, David? You already have a backup, baby. The one that I have pre-rolled is. Um, should I go ahead and tell its name and all? Uh, yeah. My next character is blah, 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 a Chloros the Apostate. Ooh. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> who, is, who is an illusionist? Uh, oh, fucking yeah, illusionist? Okay. Are you okay. fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. I mean, like, I, like, I'm I very tempted you. for Chloris the Apostate to be a thief right now. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. Oh, yeah, yeah you're, oh, you of course gosh. are not. You guys are not beholden to the backup characters that you made. If you want yeah, to make another character or something like that, you totally can. Um, and I, I am not. Chloris has an int of eighteen. Um, so yeah. Mm. You have an in. I remember when you rolled him. You have an eight, an eighteen intelligence, and then you turn it into an illusionist. Yeah. So, um, anyways, uh, you can you can certainly just roll up another guy. Uh, you know, it's, don't it's you fine. dare. You amazing. give me that character if you're not going to yeah. use it. You give it to me. <laughs> give it to me, David. Okay. So I'm what we'll say is for next you. time. So for next time is that um, Squeegee manages to uh, to you know, out, out maneuver the Shambly Mound, not that difficult, and escape back out into the hallway with Varder's backpack and has nice. to report All right. has to report the bad news. Um you still have a very unconscious uh Avaricios who is suffering from uh, blood loss at the moment. Um so that's an issue. Uh and it's pouring rain and yeah, so disaster. Disaster in the palace. Oof. Uh, that's a good idea. Oof. So we'll, we'll have to well, pick it up. It was, a, it was pretty epic disaster, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, it was, great it was encounter. Very fun. Yeah. Very fun listening in on that encounter. And yeah. again, thank you everybody. That was that was awesome to watch. Yeah, it was very cool. Very close call. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. I, uh, I hope everyone really enjoyed that. If that's the term for it, I, don't... <laughs> <laughs> I feel limber. I'll say that I feel limber. It was it was, it was very yeah. very fun. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in um, once again. Please yeah. don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Three to six down the line. Spread the word. You know the job. Um, and uh, we will see you guys all next time. Everyone have a great awesome. week. Right on. Take thanks, care, John. everybody. Bye. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Bye.